ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the April 10th, 2019 Select Board meeting. I will call this meeting to order. And the first thing on our agenda tonight will be the reorganization of the Select Board. Uh, congratulations to those that have been reelected. And um, would someone like to make a motion? Uh, if it's okay, I would like to uh, make a nomination. But before I do so, I want to thank um, our current chair for her service over the past year. <laughs> Look at me. It's, it's me. me. <laughs> it's me. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I appreciate that, your leadership. Thank you. Um, and so I would like to nominate uh, Christian Stanley for the chair and David Phil for the clerk position if they're willing to accept. Okay. I'll second Christian. I'll, I'll second uh, both of you. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations. No. Did you want to? Did no. you want to? The other way around, I was going to <laughs> say, but oh. that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Are you good? Yeah. Yeah. I, All right. Mm -hmm. So we have this a new chair, Christian Stanley. Congratulations, Thank and you. David Phil is our clerk. Thank you. Good news is there. Wish you have a good year. The apple, yeah, right? thank you. <laughs> We're yeah. here for you. All right. All right. Sure. So I guess um, just thank you. And uh, just a few things I wanted to say about being chair, um, if I can. Uh, one thing is I was hoping that uh, we could all sign a code of conduct that we were presented with last year um, at next week's meeting. Um, bring that up on the agenda. I also have presented a schedule in the past that uh, I'd like to stick to and I'm happy to share that with you guys now or at a future time, but just to kind of stick to a rough schedule throughout the year. Um, and then a, a few things I'd like to do over this term is establish a committee to review our form of government um, and provide a recommendation uh, for our next annual town meeting. Um, I would like to establish some form of committee uh, focused on climate change uh, and like to see if we can get people to sign on at the upcoming town meeting. Uh, we've talked before about establishing a civility and inclusion committee uh, that I'd like to uh, spearhead as well. Um, also just looking into economic development is another committee we could possibly establish uh, to look at opportunities in Hadley for developing our economic outlets. Um, and then possibly as well work on updating some of our town bylaws and incorporate that into a senior tax work off program. But all those will come and uh, also all the great projects that we're doing, the uh, senior center, the fire substation, and the library projects. So a lot to go through in the next year. Okay, just um, on the code of conduct. Yeah. Can I suggest maybe that uh, it might take two meetings because if memory serves me correctly, when we talked about it last time, I think there were a couple of talking points yeah. that people wanted to modify. And I think we should go through those, and I think we should sign it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. I just don't know that we can do it in the next. Okay. By next meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So let's let's meeting. bring it up next meeting, and then yeah. we can go. From <clears throat> yeah. We might have to like when town meeting is over, which is the first meet weekend yeah. in, in May, that we can dive into these um, yeah, ambitious uh, All things these things <laughs> are coming up. Right now we're on <laughs> town meeting and uh, Well, it's good to get it forward. out there so that people, if they want to Yeah, I wanted to kind of get some things out before town sure. meeting and hopefully even say some things at town meeting regarding those things. So, sure. um, all right. And we can just move into the consent agenda. Uh, we have warrants. API 1935, reissue, AP 1940, AP 1940S. Uh, we have a service zone plan. The fire chief presents the amended ambulance service zone plan to incorporate a part of UMass, a DLTA grant, affordable housing, Board will sign a commitment letter to participate with PVPC on implementing the DLTA grant to study affordable housing. Recreational boating safety and law enforcement. 
police chief provide an update to the town's voting safety and law enforcement. Do you guys want to speak to that after we take the vote, or? If you'd like to pull them off, and uh, um, we'll give you just a brief description of, there's, you know, it doesn't require any action on the first, but on the second, the, um, the late fees, I believe that requires action. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll take and then, those off? Yeah, and then off. we'll take off the also late fees for private duty detail vendors. The police chief presents his recommended late fee schedule for private duty detail vendors. So does Ms. Mike? Oh, that's what I was going to ask. Okay. Also. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Same page. Oh. Give it an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so was the fire chief coming in to do I, I popped into his office right before I came over here. He was sending out the, the code Next red up, yeah. message. Yeah, he's sending out for the water. We yeah, make that announcement. I think he was going to be right behind yeah, me, but I'm not it. sure exactly where he is. Okay, if he comes in, then we can have him address it. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give me a cake. Yeah. <laughs> if he comes in, go. we can address it. No, this is good. You can feed me. Uh, no, that sounds good. So do we want to set it aside, or do we want to take a vote on that now? I'd like to hear what it is. Okay. So let's wait. Okay, so I'll make a motion that we accept um, on the consent agenda the warrants and the DLTA grant uh, for affordable housing. Okay. Second. And we can take a vote. Yeah, All, those favor. All those in favor. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I'll get it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, aye. 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 You get a big problem with her and I both. I know, yes. on either <laughs> side. This is like. <laughs> 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 Who's kicking who? Okay. And so, would you like to speak to those? Sure. Uh, I'll do the uh, the first part, and um, the lieutenant uh, can explain a little bit about the, the late fees. That's the one that, that requires some action on the most part. Um, just really quickly to give you a, a little background and just kind of a reminder about the, the boating um, safety. And law enforcement article or the uh, issue here um, about two years ago uh, we were uh, we were approached by Massachusetts Environmental Police and they requested some assistance from us to try to help them with some of the issues they're dealing with on the water uh, they just don't have the personnel to do what it is that they need to be doing um, up and down the, the Connecticut River Valley in this general area uh, there was some private money involved from, I believe, um, uh, what was the 5K? Uh, Kestrel. Kestrel. And they, we kind of gathered area departments together as well as the Mass Environmental Police, and they were trying to put something together to kind of pay the officers from each agency to, to help them out. I think they kind of realized the amount of money that may be involved, and the project really kind of fell flat. In the interim, over the course of the last about year and a half, uh, we were approached by several people in our area in Hadley, um, and we got a lot of complaints about Mitch's Island and the river in general with a lot of the, you know, there was criminal element um, up and down the, the waterways, and Mitch's Island itself was becoming, you know, kind of uh, untenable. People just didn't want to go take their families there. So. Uh, we kind of realized that, that something needed to happen and it wasn't going to be able to be funded privately. So uh, I approached the East Hampton police chief and we reached out to several of our area partners, including Mass Environmental Police, the US Coast Guard, um, uh, DCR, and some other entities. And we formed the uh, Connecticut River Task Force. For one summer, it was kind of a uh, a practice, so to speak, we work together jointly to kind of address some of the complaints and some of the problems that we're getting up and down the river in all of those cities and towns, Northampton, Holyoke, South Hadley, East Hampton, and Hadley. Uh, and um, I, I feel like we, uh, we made some really good strides the first year. Um, over the course of this last year, we brought in the district attorney's office. Um, to help us with some of the legal issues that we were dealing with. And the final part was essentially assigning uh, all of our officers and training the ones who are interested in it to be able to have the legal authority to do the things on the water 
that they can do on land. And I simply wanted to put together this paperwork. I uh, sent uh, you know, some of our past press releases to Jennifer and she kindly posted them on the agenda for anyone to take a look at. And uh, I just wanted, I thought it was important for people to know we're kind of proud of, of what we're doing out there. I think we're making a difference on the water and um, I just want to let folks know and let the board know that uh, we're going into our second year of this and uh, these, are, these are the things that we're going to be doing. Um, just to try to make the uh, the waterway a safer place. So no jurisdictional issues? You guys have that all worked out? With we have it all worked out. That was all part of the process. That's why we, we got the district attorney's office involved <coughs> and our Western Mass Mutual Aid Agreement covers uh, waterways as well. That's what I was just going to ask, a mutual yep. aid. Yeah. Thank you. Will you have an officer out there on the water on a it, regular basis? It, no, it won't be anything like that. Okay. It's simply, it's simply the, the law, Chapter 90B, Section 12, requires that we make the assignment. So essentially, I assign officers to have the authority to do this. And most, for the most part, it will be task force oriented. So they'll pick certain really busy weekends where they have issues out on the water, on the island, things like that. And we'll have officers working with other jurisdictions. Uh, it'll save on, on spending because we'll have you know other officers from other towns helping us in Hadley and we will reciprocate in that manner. So uh, it's not going to be a, a boat patrol or anything like that. It'll just be as necessary. Mm -hmm. Will it be uh, fire departments helping you also? Or is the fire department services? has offered up their boat uh, in, in the time of need, we've, we've used it in the past, mm -hmm. uh, but the task force has actually acquired a boat. Uh, it'll be stored and, and housed in yet yeah, East Hampton PD, mm -hmm. uh, but we will use you know the fire department's boat as well as their you know, medics and EMTs when necessary. Quite often we get called out to, to the island to deal with injuries and things like mm -hmm. that, so mm -hmm. we do work together with them as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Motion Thank approved. you. Second. Third. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And then the other, uh, the permits or late fees? Late fees. So for the police detail late fees, uh, we're suggesting that uh, the town implement a, a late fee on our police detail billing. As you all know, we have a $21,000 slush fund, which allows for our officers to be paid in the time from which they work until the time in which the contractor pays. So uh, the officer gets paid and then eventually down the road that invoice comes in and replenishes the town, the money the town has provided to us. We have come to a point in time now where our uh, police details, we're very busy with them. Uh, and one of the, we've done a number of things within the agency. We've improved our invoice. We've improved our internal processes. And right now we're setting up with the town, working with the treasurer's office to uh, also come on with online bill pay. And that will be one of the things that we will suggest that our vendors undertake as well. So the police detail billing, this 5% uh, uh, police detail bill uh, late payment we're hoping that it will just motivate our vendors to pay in a, in a, in a quicker manner. Uh, and essentially, Lauren reaches out to our vendors and she asks uh, for them to pay the bill. And it's basically, uh, pay the bill or I'm gonna ask you again. Uh, and that's really kind of the end of it. So now with this 5% fee that we're suggesting on top of the police detail invoice, we're hoping that when Lauren now calls and she says, can you pay the bill, please? Otherwise, we're going to implement this 5% fee. You can go online. You can pay the bill right now through our through our uh, online bill pay. And we're hoping that it will just expedite the process along. Do you have a frequent offender, a group of frequent offenders that are always late, or is it just kind of a scatter? It's it's a scatter. I mean, we we work for we work for Verizon and EverSource very frequently. So it's just it's just over such a long period of time that we're invoicing them over and over and over again. Uh, the same thing with the university when we're working for you know, the, at the Mullen Center, working for at the at McGurk Stadium. It's just there's just a lot of them. So, so the extra money that we have in for a uh, article, we're hoping to increase that amount at town meetings. So yes, that correct. 
So the, uh, the, the article on for town meeting, I believe, is that, uh, to bring us up to a $40,000 slush fund. Mm -hmm. And it's basically th that money is just, uh, it's a revolving account. And right now, in addition to when our police detail billing, the town also collects a 10% administrative fee on the bill on the billing. So by improving our processes and increasing our slush fund, not only will it pay our officers faster, but it will also motivate our officers to continue to take the details. If we outsource our details to state police or to other agencies, they collect the administrative fee. Do you know if other towns do this 5%? Like, is it something that's proven to be successful? Just because of my experience, that kind of thing is tricky sometimes. We're going to be the litmus test. Okay. So is there a MGL or anything like that that caps the amount of the late fee? Linda, do you have any? I don't know, and I, I'm not. I'm sure. Can I be, have it clearer? Is it a five percent, a one-time five percent, or is it something you're in, like each month? Or I only just threw out the five percent as a suggestion. As a one-time. As as a suggestion, whether it can be one time or whether it can be on the monthly, that's up to the that's up to the board, I believe, to to implement that. I'd just say I'd, I'd like to see actually more than five percent, if uh, especially after thirty days, if if there's no cap under the law and what we can charge. I'd like to see, you know, a ten or fifteen percent lay fee and that way our officers are getting paid and we're not having to use that revolving fund all the time. Thirty days five percent, sixty days ten percent, ninety days fifty. Generally speaking, a lot of our bylaws where we have the fines and the fees like yeah. as you step up in subsequent offenses the fine does go up. So, yeah. um, so it's tough like under contract too a lot of these they're not getting the money for contracts when they start the big construction jobs, but yeah, but, but that shouldn't be our option. The, the basic Eversource and, and Verizon should should move their papers along a little bit quicker than that. Yeah, I mean we're help uh, almost every contractor that we, you know, when I get invoices, it's always net thirty, so no one hesitates to hold us to that. So, right. Um, so the select board can grant this uh, late fee under Mass General Law Chapter 40, Section 22F. It doesn't specify a cap. There is a cap that's established by uh, court decision. And the, the principle is that we can't charge more than what it costs us to uh, administer. So certainly a 5% cap. A five percent late fee is reasonable. Uh, ten percent is probably reasonable as well. But I think once you get higher than ten percent, you may find yourself having a harder time justifying uh, that higher amount because it may not match up with your expenses for having to deal with officers who are being paid late. So could we have a escalating one at forty-five days? It's five percent. At sixty days, it's ten percent. Yeah, you can. You can do I'm hopeful that this is just a tool that we will use to <laughs> say to the contractor, please pay or we'll implement. I'm yeah. hoping it's something that we rarely have to use. So in that case, I would rather go with a higher fee that's more threatening, so to speak, right. and encourages them to pay up in a timely manner, uh, you know, and hopefully we never have to slap it on. Uh, so yeah. I would just say have it at 45 days instead of, thir you know, if you did yeah, 30, you most people are used to paying 30. Um, but if you did a little bit over that, a little higher fee. What what's yeah. kind of the those that are late? How long are they taking to pay when they are late? Is it sixty days, ninety days? What are you kind of looking at? Yeah, you're seeing sixty days. Okay. Some so are, there are some longer. Yes. Ninety. Yeah. Was so how about ten percent at forty-five days? Uh, yeah. And David, you mentioned that you can't you can't charge more yeah. than the administrative charge, meaning the ten percent that we that the town gets in the general fund for each detail, we can't uh, do more than that. Your, your actual expenses associated with... Uh, so that would, be the, that would be the expense. Yeah, yeah. Right. So we couldn't go more than 10, and the 10% 10 admin fee for all the details goes into the general fund, um, which is essentially you know, kind of the way to pay back the <laughs> town for the slush fund. I kind of the late fees, we yeah. do the same thing. I kind of disagree with the data. It's not really a, a fee. <coughs> It's a percentage on the money of the bill. It's 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 not really a fee. It, it's it's a percentage on the money owed. Well, I think ten percent is still reasonable because we're having to 
the, the treasurer is going to be having to pay the officers out of the revolving fund in yeah. the meantime, take her time. Uh, you guys are, Lauren's using her administrative yep. time Lauren to track these people that. down, so I don't think 10% is yeah. unreasonable. Especially at 45, you know, right. then you're asking at that point we have to reissue bills and right. all kinds Start of things. somewhere. Yeah. And then we can always readdress it. Okay. <coughs> so can make I make a motion? Yeah, can I make a motion to amend the proposed late fee to 10% at 45 days net? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye, aye. Aye. So do we know, was Mike planning on coming to talk about it? Yeah, so I talked to him about 4 o'clock this afternoon and he was planning to be here. I just texted him. Okay. Yeah. Do, we can hold this and bring it up again sure. later, yeah. give him some time. Okay. I'll let you know. And so, move into public comment. Yeah. Go ahead. I got a few things don't ask. <clears throat> Uh, first of all, did the selectman order uh, the Hadley police to, to stand guard at the April 2nd uh, planning board meeting? And what was the reason for it? And I want to know, as a taxpayer, what did that cost us? Public comments. Yeah. Is there an answer? We can take it under advisement. Will there ever be an answer? Just, yeah. just for the record, I think the chief of police answered your question. No, I got two ago. conflicting answers. Well, we're not going to talk. About we're not going to talk about it right now. It's just public comment. Well, I know, but is there is there somewhere along the line that's going to be an answer to that question? I don't see any reason if you ask the police chief. No, I got two. Conf I said I got two conflicting answers to it, and so I'm asking you that the select board. Take it under we can take it under advisement, and, and we can look into it. Okay. I expect an answer to that. Then I made a, <clears throat> a public request with the town administrator on April 3rd. The response on April 8th from the town administrator was this was to do a public records request for Phil Palumbo resume and, resume and his uh, certificates. And the act this was written back to me, dear Mr. Mitchkowski, the town of Hadley received your request for public records dated April 3rd, 2019, concerning documents associated with Mr. Phil Colombo, specifically uh, his resume and qualifications and edu education uh, certificates. Please be advised that a search of our records, uh, Mr. Phil Colombo, revealed no documents related to the re requested information. The information that you request does not exist in the select board files and therefore not falls under the definition of public records. Now, <clears throat> the problem I have with that is under, under the Commonwealth of Mass, under Owner's Project Manager Guidelines, Mass General Law, Chapter 149, Section 44A and a half, the state strongly recommends that, I'm going to read this here too. And the reason I'm doing this is because I feel this guy is costing this town a lot of money. And it says right in here, under their guidelines, awarding authority should carefully review the OPM's um, ap applicants to ensure they have significant relevant experience in the supervision and construction of the type of uh, complexity necessary for the project. It is critical that the select, selected OPM be identified as an individual within a firm and that the individual meets and preferably exceeds the minimum qualification. So my question is, if you never got anything on them, how did you appoint someone that may be not even qualified. And I'm gonna refer back to what happened with the senior center not following the zoning laws and coming in for change orders. You hired this and the state wants you to right. have an OPM. We, so we, we you, have your point, thank you. So you follow the- Phil Palumbo I works for to, Colliers. Colliers is the contractor. What? We've hired them, him to be our OPM. They're a respectable contractor. They met all our criteria at the time. We've made that decision. But nowhere, Mr. Chairman, nowhere in his 
application from Collier, did Mr. Palumbo, anything was talked about hit or his resume? Okay. We did. That's not necessary. And then also, I, uh, I want to continue. <clears throat> I want to uh, uh, notify the ex-chairman that I filed a formal complaint to the State Ethics Commission <clears throat> against Joyce Youngwell Chairman for the abuse of uh, uh, ethics code. And also, um, I filed with the town clerk and also the board of, board of selectmen. And I hope you guys take action on, on, on her reaction like you did to Donald Pepp, all right? And then uh, I want to advise the board that uh, we're going to file a, a political group called the Citizens for Re Responsibilities and Accountabilities and uh, the rights of all residents, landowners, business owners of the town of Hadley. And then finally, your your comment period. We have a we have a walk-in well, on a planning board. We had a walk-in that people could come in, ask any questions they wanted. But here, you come in here, you ask a question, you get a comment hour, and you never get an answer on it. So what is the sense of even asking a question? I think to be fair with the citizens and taxpayers of the town, if a citizen is good enough to come forth in a public meeting, ask a question. You guys should at least respect that and answer the question. Okay, thank you. All right. Sometimes Any we other? don't have the answer and we need to research it though, so. You never have the answer, seems to me. Any other comments? I'd like to um, comment to the audience. Um, that if you're trying to reach the senior center, there's been a problem with getting our telephone moved to our new location. Please call the old number, 586-4023, and leave a message. We check that answering machine quite frequently during the day, and that's the only way you can reach us at the moment. Hopefully, by next, I think it's the 16th, we'll have service. We're stopping or stop in and see our new facility. It's very pleasant. No elevator. You'll love it. <laughs> <laughs> Any other public comments? I see the fire chief has walked in. Would you like to go over the service zone plan? Sure. So basically this is uh, required as part of the new ambulance service. So it's, uh, it's a rewrite of our service zone plan that goes through uh, basically everything having to do with our, our service that we're providing to the town's people and it's a very long document. Yeah. There's a very large addendum to it, but it basically has all of our mutual aid agreements, it has our the list of requirements of what we have to have signed off from the, the doctor at the hospital, just everything across the board uh, in order to operate. So this is the first step to have you sign off on it, then it goes to the region uh, to be approved by the region and then they'll Usually they ship back comments on potential updates or changes that we might need to do to it. And then this, is, this becomes a living document until we have to amend it. Um, for example, we also have our, our uh, basic EMT plan in here as well. So if we down the road decide to have our own basic ambulance, we're starting that process with having that in place as well. Does this need our signature? I just need the chair's signature. So. Oh, you do missed we, it. That's do we need a vote? Yeah. Make a motion uh, to, to approve. Do we so need a vote on that? So yeah, yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and then um, Jennifer just asked if we could do the annual report dedication real quick. Is that, yes. you wanna? Yes. Um, so we did a call out for volunteers, or not volunteers, excuse me. Uh, uh, people for the dedication of the annual report and the Fred Oakley Volunteer Award. There are four people on the list that I provided to y'all. The Hadley Mothers Club, Leona Chimura, Dennis Meehan, which would be in memoriam, and Ed Dukevitz. And everybody who nominated these four people and organization felt that they could really truly receive either one. So nobody was nominating just for the Fred Oakley and nobody nominated just for the dedication. Um, and th those are the four people. I know a little I'm bit sorry, about- I missed the first, so I heard 
the Hadley Mothers Club. Oh, the Mothers Club yes. itself. Yes, it's the whole organization. <laughs> it's their 75th anniversary, yeah. and yeah. so the, they were put out there as a as a, a nomination. I did do some research. They have not received it um, in any of the annual reports that I was able to find. Mm -hmm. And so again, Jennifer, so the Fred Oakley Award is the, really a volunteerism award. Yes. Right. And then the first one is the dedication of the annual report. Right. And for whatever criteria we choose. Yes. Okay. Does anybody have any? I'll make a motion to the uh, annual report dedication to the Hadley Mothers Club since this is their 75th year and they have certainly benefited the whole town um, from school to seniors to everybody um, to the town employees so I um, this would be a nice year to do that for them mm -hmm. Second. Mm -hmm. okay any other discussion it's not really but the Oakley awards the, the volunteer award. do we want to finish this one first yeah do we want to do the dedication first and then move on to well, I would think the Mother's Club maybe should get the, the Fred Oakley, not the town report. Mm -hmm. or, uh, I was wondering about that, too, just because it's a volunteer yeah. award. Mm -hmm. So you know, again, then, Mother's, Mother's then Club. Then an in, individual Dennis. that devoted their whole life Dennis. to the town that you would uh, Leona, nominate. Leona, Shimura, and Ed Duquette. You know, I, I just look at, at the longest period of time that you would nominate somebody for, for the annual report for someone that devoted their whole life to the town, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm 75 years is a long time. Yeah, but it, it's it's an organization, not an individual. Mm -hmm. I think that's because there's so many town yeah. residents right. that belong, that belong to, it. to it. Yeah. yeah. That, that's it's it's, it's, nice it's, it's a tough call either way, way. It I, know, is. I understand. Yeah. It is. Well, yeah. So, would any of these people fit the criteria for the Fred Oakley Award if we de dedicated the annual report to the Mothers Club? Would any of these others fit uh, the I mean, Dennis Mann for sure. Right. Um, you know, he was a member of the uh, Friends of the Library and the Library Building Committee. Mm -hmm. um, very active member. It was a huge loss. Um. Leona Chamura, as I understand, is very active as part of the after school program yeah. and mm -hmm. she also um, is very active in her church and volunteers <coughs> there. And so uh, the person who nominated her was sort of saying, you know, she doesn't necessarily do just town events, but she's very active in the town and that the children do love her. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was why she was nominated. And Ed Dukevitz was nominated because he was. Uh, if, if somebody in the Deputy back there, yeah. he... Um, Assistant Chief. Assistant Chief. And I believe he was the first paramedic, volunteer paramedic yeah. in the town, e is that correct? Yeah, first EMT. Mm -hmm. First EMT yeah. in the town. Yeah. And, and he, I, he has a history of service to the town, as I understand. And yeah. that those were, that's why they were not. How many years did Eddie have? I don't remember offhand a lot. I, uh, <laughs> I, that's what I'm saying. Somebody yeah. devoted their whole life to the mm -hmm. fire association and the volunteer fire department is, is pretty big. You know? <coughs> well, there's a motion on the table for the Mother's Club to receive the dedication. Well, there's not saying that, and we have done in the past. Um, we've done multiples. We've done multiples, yeah. so mm -hmm. we could dedicate the, um, since we have four, we could do two and two. Two and two. Mm -hmm. Certainly, I don't want to slight anybody because yeah. it's, it's very nice that people do uh, volunteer and yeah. donate, donate their time. So, um, if someone would like to pick some, you want to pick somebody else, or shall we? Who else would like to go for the? No, I was. We had talked at one point about for the dedication uh, of having a town employee and a, a resident vote right. uh, because the you know typically people are only nominated a year after they've already passed away or you know, after they've been long out of service for the town mm -hmm. so as kind of a recognition to a current town employee uh, we were gonna maybe think about doing both so do I mean 
we want to hold a hold off on that for until a future year, or do we want to? Well, I think I think, think the current town employee, and we never really talked about. I I'm reluctant to do somebody who's actually on the payroll, mm -hmm. and and the reason being. Um, I think it can become, it, it could become problematic in the workplace, you know, where people start worrying about, well, why was so-and-so recognized? You know what I mean? Yeah. I'd, I'd rather stay away from that. I, I'm more than happy to recognize long-term municipal employees <coughs> like Ed and Leona would fall in that category yeah, who... Right. Um, retired. But they're retired now, so... Right. As we did with uh, Eddie Foreman. Yeah, exactly. It yeah. was after he, he retired. Tommy, yeah. I think we did too. Yeah. Yeah. I just like to not see it. Only I love, after people I love the Mother's Club and that. Eddie for the report, and then the other two for the old credo. Certainly. That's kind yeah, of what that, I was thinking too. Yeah. You know, without the volunteers and the people that devoted their lives to this town, we wouldn't be here right now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. For sure. And you really got to recognize them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We're not arguing that. Do you want to modify your motion? Certainly. I'll make a motion to um, for the dedication of the report to the Hadley Mothers Club and to uh, Ed Dukevich. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And we'll make a motion for the Fred Oakley. Yeah, I'll make a motion um, that we dedicate this year's Fred Oakley Award to both uh, Leona Chimura and in memoriam to Dennis Mann. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Jen. And thank you for taking me out of order. Yeah. And then uh, we can get right into budget discussion. We are talking about the yep. 700 budget series for debt, the state assessments 800 budget series, and unclassified benefits 900 budget series. So this all starts on page 81. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Oh, I don't think I know. No, Yes. Yeah. <laughs> voice. <laughs> no water for you. <laughs> Thank you. I can start on the 700, the 710 and 750, which are the uh, debt and interest schedules. Um, this budget looks a little different the way we've laid it out this year because if you look at the prior years, 17 and 18 and 19, how it's been done in the past, we have a single line for all of the uh, principal and a single line item for all of the interest. Because we're trying to track very carefully um, the amount that is subject to the debt exclusion and keeping in mind that we have a cap on what we're trying to um, spend on that account based on promises made to the uh, taxpayers. Um, we have set out line items separately for the principal for a long-term debt, interest for long-term debt for the debt that is subject to debt exclusion, and a separate set of figures for within the levy. Um, we're also trying to use the within the levy figure as a planning tool now as the capital planning committee is going to be deciding on which items are going to go and be funded within the levy. Uh, for, uh, the difference between those two, for um, just to explain, is when we borrow and pay off within the levy, that is a regular budget line item, just like any other department, just like anything else that we're funding out of taxation. Um, that is already being raised. When the debt is paid out of, uh, subject to debt exclusion, that means we are raising the extra money to pay that debt amount, that the taxes are being raised, that extra amount, and that extra amount is going directly to pay the 
the, the debt. So um, the, the, the goal uh, for us each year now is uh, right now the debt excluded, if we keep that amount at $1.107 million for the debt exclusion, debt and interest, that is the prior um, debt exclusion, debt and interest, plus the amount that we're spending on the buildings. And then when people, when the town passes other overrides, such as they do, they do pretty much every year on other items, that would be in addition to all those. So we'd be, a, so we're re raising even more money to cover those additional amounts. So this year, the amount for uh, debt excluded is, is one million two hundred seven thousand seven hundred thirty-six dollars, which is about a hundred thousand dollars above the floor to cover the items that we purchased, we borrowed for, and they're going to be paid off. In five years, and then those will come. Then that amount will go down, and or be offset by other borrowings. The amount within the levy that we're borrowing right now, or that we're paying off each year, um, is uh, this year 177,533. So the way this will appear in the finance committee's budget, it will still be set out as the principal figure and the interest figure. But for your purposes and for our purposes now. The accountant set up several more line items within those budgets so that we could differentiate those items and be able to, um, exp I don't know if it helps explain it better, but hopefully in time, that's the, <laughs> that's the point of it. So those are the figures, and the total debt and interest is $1,385,269. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions? So basically the long-term debt, those are the bonds, correct? Long-term debt are bonds. That's the, Yes, that's the further okay. breakdown between those. And the bonds are long-term, and the short-term are the bands, which are one year or less right now. And um, we haven't actually done a bond since 2014. Uh, we have our first bond for the new buildings happening in June this year, where ha we have some of the preliminary bands, the brands that did preliminary borrowings for these buildings will be coming due and get rolled into a bond plus uh, with also new borrowings for the purpose uh, because we're doing a lot of construction and the money will be spent pretty much over the next year. And then um, after June, any more borrowing will be through other bands and in another year and a half in January of 21 um, will be uh, the second bond to cover it and then we'll, then we'll, be, we'll be settled. And from then on, we're hoping that the bands will continue to be used for these smaller items and will then differentiate what's going to be subject to debt exclusion. We're hoping that through plan the Capital Planning Committee that those will be the larger items. And then the smaller items, we're not going to, uh, we'll be able to continue to pay off through the budget and not put a lot of fussy smaller items on a ballot right. to go and be voted. So the people are voting for things, hopefully, yes, for example, 100,000 and up, you'll go and vote a debt exclusion override. But if we're spending ten, twenty thousand dollars on something, we're just going to borrow it and we're going to pay it off within this budget. And Linda, you so. made a, a good point. I think that bears repeating and repeating <laughs> <laughs> at the uh, at department head meeting today. Just there uh, seems to continue to be some confusion about, um, you know, when you have an expanded building project, you know, that that spans over a multi-year period. The, um, the debt associated with that has really already been accounted for, and and a lot of people are confused. And it makes right. sense, I mean, because they think about it like a home equity loan, where, oh, I took a little bit, but then when I go back, I'm going to have to pay more interest because I just took right. another tranche off my home equity loan, and it, it doesn't work that way. Right. Um, everything's already built in. Right. Especially since uh, I'm sure people could be looking at this bond and the next bond that we're probably looking at another $10 million in borrowing. And how are we going to pay for that? We've already actually budgeted that. When we looked at the original budgeting for planning for these three buildings, we um, actually used, as uh, as you pointed out, I think we used a 5% or three, maybe, three three or five, five. Five. Yeah, we did 5% yeah. interest mm -hmm. projected, and we've been getting um, the borrowing in less than that. So we projected an interest rate and payment, and right from then, uh, in order to keep the payments even over the years, by increasing the, uh, the, the debt exclusion payments by 285500 a year, that is the translation of the $95 per household, uh, per average, average house. house, the $95 increase over the prior year's debt and, and um, interest payments, the debt exclusion payments. 
uh, and we started that right away. So the, the uh, debt and exclusion budget went up right away, that 285.5 in fiscal 18. And it's the same amount in 19, it's the same amount in 20. That's how much we're paying off, over, almost 300,000 a year already on those borrowings. So in three years, we've got a, a, almost a million dollars paid off by the time we're borrowing the next amount. So that is the amount it's going to stay at. We're not going to be borrowing, uh, we're going to be borrowing more, but the payment schedule is going to, is already set on those. Now people are, st we're still going to be voting for borrow, for, uh, Police cars, fire engines, and DPW trucks. That will be over and above, but we have already quantified the borrowing for these buildings. It is accounted for. That increase has already happened, and we're going to stay steady over the however many years it takes us to pay that off. And so, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, um, like you mentioned, the department had meeting, there's some confusion about you know where increases are coming from. So. Is it possible to maybe twice a year after annual town meeting and then special town meeting, based on the results of town meeting votes, to mm -hmm. publish some sort of document that says, okay, these items were approved at town meeting, and as a result, the tax rate is going to go up this total amount, and that way we can push it out there to the public, right. and they can see that, okay, town meeting has you know consequences so either show up or you know what I mean well that's that's exactly right because the the new things that we have borrowed for since we accounted for the buildings right um, I take that I put it over five years I know what the interest rate is right. and that's accounts for that additional 100,000 in that budget right now so we bought about five hundred thousand dollars worth of other items right. um, and it's not just vehicles that don't, I think some was of the, the refrigeration survey was in the there yeah there are some yeah, the HVAC mm -hmm. uh, the HVAC for both of the, um, mm -hmm. the school and the, so there's those are good you know <coughs> items that we're putting in there and buying as well so I just think it gets yes. lost in translation for people that don't go to it the and don't watch right. consistently. They just see their tax rate go up and then they don't have any idea where it's coming from, so they assume yeah. that it's coming from the library or the senior center. Yeah. And, and they said, and then they'll say, we we, st we have more to go. We right. still haven't borrowed the rest of this, right. so it's going to go up even more. Right. Well, so, yes, I value. And, and then if it doesn't go to ballot yeah. and it's not that exclusion, then that throws another right. ring yeah. into the right. 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 Here. So I guess that's why I started trying to sort of um, to itemize this out in here, yeah. at least so that it's it's available. I think it's still difficult to um, explain and understand, um, and that's I think I'm trying to struggle with. How can I? Yes, if there's some kind of presentation I can do, the right kind of draft, that, uh, graph that gives the answer. Yeah, so right. that, so so that means you know, like a summary of what's changed in the tax rate or mm -hmm. what's changed in the debt. Yeah, voted at town meeting. You could have dollar figure, and then you know the cost per. Right. But each year we have things that come off too. Yeah, we yeah. do. Right. You know, so that they have like yeah. aware, yeah. so that, that to see if it yeah. would show them how it balances. You know, that, that they would maybe understand it. And, and that's a good point, Joyce, because when people want to know how much this is going to cost, and you get the answer out of you know us or the assessor's office, and they see how much it's going to increase the tax rate. It's not necessarily an increase in that amount at all. It might be completely absorbed by something going off. Mm -hmm. So um, it seems to me people would be more interested in what the net increase is than what each one's going to cost. I'm not sure about that, but that seems to be, and that makes sense to me. When I know what my bill was this year, how is it going to compare next year? And when you're voting on something and all you hear about is the increases, mm -hmm. um, that might make a difference knowing, but, uh, you know, but we we just finished off paying a number of other vehicles, and so this is actually going to be um, neutral from one year to the next. Even though, of course, these items cost. And never right. we never mean to say this isn't going to cost you anything. Mm -hmm. It is. It's just not necessarily going to increase what we're raising from you this year. So I am really working to try and I want to work to try and come up with a, a better way of presenting this. And David and I were at a presentation a few weeks ago about how some of the other towns are, are doing just this kind of thing and we've gotten in some uh, some capital uh, debt planning spreadsheets and ideas from some other towns so um, just some sort of clip notes version for people right. you know once or twice a year so they can basically see where their tax rates are sure sure something at, at select board meeting you think or, um, mm -hmm. or yeah. no, not something publishable yeah something yeah. we can send out 
uh, post message oh, on I the see. website. Something okay, like something that. writing. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. something writing. Okay. I was going to see just... if the finance committee had any questions. Yeah, I, I, yeah. approximately what's the outstanding balance of what have we borrowed? I mean, what's, what's our follow up? Uh, what do we have outstanding right now? Um, it was eight we just borrowed. I say uh, we probably have, uh, uh, after March, we probably have about 12 million outstanding right now. We're going to be borrowing another four in June on top of that. Um, ultimately, with the buildings, we'll be up at about $12 million for the buildings. And then we're going to have the others will be a smaller term borrowing. I can, I can give you those capital items. Um, Is it 12 and 4 or 12, 4 and 5? 12 and 4, you're saying? Or an additional 12? What? Oh, not an additional 12. Oh. Okay. No, it's, um, well, our, we have a lot of borrowing, which, which isn't related to any of that. It's our old borrowing, which is mm -hmm. still not. Yeah, so fine. That's, that's, that's where we started with 8 coming. million. Yeah. yeah, we started with 8 million, and then mm -hmm. so, yes, we borrowed another 4 towards our new projects. Right. And so, then, and which will be about 12, so I guess we're going to be heading up towards uh, $20 million. Considering, too, that we're paying off yeah. a million a year, so we're mm -hmm. never really going to get up, up to that. And with lower interest rates, most of that $1.2 million will be going into um, uh, payment, paying it down. I mean, so that sort of tells the whole story, though, right? Like, if you know what's out there. Yes. And that's another way, that, part that of certainly is another graph or another yeah. part of what uh, that's what's looking for, another part of the explanation that would be useful. See it. Yeah, we always, we do file, a, you know, show how much is outstanding in uh, what has been borrowed, right. but that's only part of the picture if you right. have authorized borrowing, which you haven't done yet. And for the last couple of years, we've been very lopsided towards our author, what we've borrowed is a lot less than our authorized borrowing, because our authorized would be 14 and we had eight outstanding. Right. So. Um, but we're going to uh, we're going to catch up to that because we're because we're doing these buildings. We're going mm -hmm. to our uh, actual borrowing will, will be much closer to our authorized borrowing in about another year. Mm -hmm. So, um, but that's a that's a part of it too to show the balances and where it is. So, yeah, I will. I'd love to work with finance committee and let, get some back and forth about how what is a good way to present it. You can, sure. I'm sure yeah. we all have some good ideas. We on also that one talk, too. talked about one time is. Um, and I'm trying to remember to get this right. In capital, we talked about maybe putting more in towards this and paying down a little bit more. Right. So that way, we when capital comes up, we could. Uh, have you thought any more about that? So that you know we what I'm talking about. Less, that? less uh, that we can purchase things without as much borrowing. Right. And that's where I think where we're trying to get there because that's been hard to have uh, to find out where we have an extra few thousand, few hundred thousand dollars to put into a capital account mm -hmm. and then spend it. What we're actually doing is uh, we looked at the borrowing within the levy, which we discovered about a year ago was coming down very rapidly. But rather than, again, uh, rather than have the budget go right down and have it go up again, we're working to try and keep it up at that level. So we were, um, what do we have this year, 177,000. Two years ago, it was, I think, 150. So we were trying to step that up each year. Mm -hmm. And if we could have a leap in that area, you know, if, if you could make that the Fifty three hundred thousand dollars to cover our capital. We would be really close to um, having uh, to, to matching what we're actually spending in that year. The more that we can put in it, the more it would be spending, and then we would have less going into interest. Mm -hmm. um, the advantage of doing it through borrowing within the levy is that we're uh, we can keep the payments even from year to year because every the mm -hmm. capital purchasing from year to year will be like this. Mm -hmm. But if we borrow each of those items for a year at a low interest rate, we're paying it off, we can make sure we're keeping it at $200,000 mm -hmm. year to year, and that we come, we come to it. So mm -hmm. um, that's, that's part of the planning I'd, I'd like to see us do, too. And if we could increase that, it's great. So what I've been doing is just kind of inching it up each year as everybody else's budget inches up. Okay. So um, we we'll get it up a little bit, but we haven't been able to manage a leak. But you know, for the vehicles and stuff like that, I know we talked about uh, the short term because by the time, if you took a 10-year loan out on a vehicle, it, it's not going to be worth yeah. anything in the first place 
anyway, and we're paying that debt and interest on that loan, you know? Right. It and just didn't add up. Yeah. And I'll tell you, it's really more rewarding to get things paid off in a short period of time. It just, and, then, and then you're ready to buy something new. It actually feels, I know that when we started doing the band payments in that way, uh, like we're borrowing, the band being um, bond anticipation note, which is the short-term borrowing, and then when it came time, when it came due, doing a lump sum rollover and saying, instead of paying one-fifth or one-tenth of everything, it's like, this year we got the backhoe taken care of. And then this year we took care of the, uh, the uh, dump truck and a, 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 a police term, cruiser. Yeah, so that maybe some of those are... long debt you can always plan on. And that, that's right. steady all the time. Yeah. So. We're only putting, at this point, we're only putting those larger capital items into bonds. The rest are going to stay in those short-term notes, and we're going to get them paid off and um, then we can and, and borrow and, and pay off again with you. I think that's going to be a, a, a more satisfying way going into our future. And then if we keep those, if we keep only the larger, the really large cap projects in the bonds, um, we're going to be able to s predict they're, they're going down over time a little bit differently and plan our next buildings. I mean, whether it's in 5, 10, 15, 20 years, you can see where your next building is going to fit in and uh, without a big leap. That's what we're trying to do is keep some steadiness, keep some predictability in here, and even payments over time. So. Okay. All Thank right. you. Yeah. Uh, any other questions or finance yeah. committee? Yeah. 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 All right. <laughs> Thank you, Linda, for all that. I know that's a lot of number crunching, so thank you for all that. Sure. And then do we want to go to the 900 series now, since it's right here, and then go to the 800, or do we want to do the 800 first? Go to the 900, because it's all okay. 900s. Where do we start with John? Oh, that's um, retirement. Retirement. Okay, retirement is something we get a letter each year. <laughs> this this is one of those. It is what it is. Um, we get a letter in November saying what the payment is as of uh, the following year, so we'll know exactly what to budget. Um, we get two options each year. One is a lump sum if you pay it all on July 1, and this year that amount is $1,271,770. Um, if we pay it all on July 1, I, I, and which we have been doing for years. But just, again, to show I guess our, our, our financial health and, um, and how some of what we're doing is working here. The other choice is to pay on July 1 and January 1 of next year two payments, each payment being $647,306.50. The difference between making those two payments and making the one payment is 22843 So by having yep. enough money in the bank or having enough liquidity as we start our year, we're able to save almost $23,000 just being, by being able to make that payment. And that was true when I came here, and I don't know if we've ever made the two payments, John, but that's but we've something. We've been able to make the one payment each year. So, um, so I'm, I'm really happy we've been able to continue that, so. And what's our next one? I've lost our sheet. Workers' <laughs> comp. Data, that's workers usually comp. a figure you come up with. Workers' comp. Workers' comp. So um, back in it's January when I put this together and estimated that we would have to increase workers' comp by fifteen hundred dollars. That looks a little light now. Uh, we probably should adopt that by another what twelve twelve thousand? Did you say? What's that? For workers' comp, a shortfall? No, I don't. See um, any kind I'm, of a shortfall on I'm thinking of unemployment. <coughs> Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is this is an estimate that I got from Maya. So the increase there is fifteen hundred dollars. Oh, from okay. one year to the next. Yeah. Yeah. Because we get that through Maya. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then the, the next amount on the agenda is the um, unemployment, which we requested at thirty three thousand. This is, this is a tough one to estimate. Um, we are a reimbursable unit. We pay as we go. So we don't pay in. It says a claim goes in, then we're charged. We can also be charged for someone who has left our employment and gone elsewhere, gotten laid off elsewhere. They go back a year, and if we're reimbursable, we might still get charged for that. So some of these can be unforeseen. Um, 
I base the estimate on what I know as current claims going into the new fiscal year and what I anticipate based on if we have um, long-term temporary employees. We know that we're going to have an unemployment claim for them, and I estimate on that. So that's what I have for this year. Uh, we did end up with a short shortfall for this year because um, of unanticipated. But that doesn't mean you need to change the budget for next year. Is that right? No, I, okay. I think the 33000 going in, and we review it in the fall and again for Maytown meeting mm -hmm. to see where we are. Yeah. We're already coming out of that hole. Yeah. Um, we've had some really high monthly ones, and this this month, who was happy it was only six hundred eighty-four dollars. So, it like oh yeah, that that's good. So we, hopefully, if we stay that for the rest of the year, we're not going to be going into the hole as much as we were, and then we'll be in a better position for twenty. And finance committee, if you guys have anything, yeah. just yes. speak up over Probably. there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Health, health insurance. Um, our rates are not changing. So, based the uh, estimate is based on the activity uh, and enrollment as of January 30th, and also adding in and figuring for any known retirements. You have to assume that person's going to retirement, and then the person replacing them having covered. So that is that estimate of one million three hundred and sixty-eight thousand. Life insurance, same thing. It's based on the uh, participation uh, and anticipated retirements and additionals as of January thirtieth for the fiscal year. Uh, Medicare, um, based on anticipated increases to pay because it's always uh, right now one four five. It's the town share. Um, I think we're in good shape on that this year as well as the life. So that's 139000 Which brings us to OPEP, which um, our balance with this year's contribution in that fund is just over $1.4 million. We're doing a really good job, and the fund is doing very well. So we're getting a lot of benefit out of our uh, the contributions that we make to the OPEP fund. Um, the plan we set in place a few years back um, was to, I think we started it at something about 250000 and we're increasing it by the 2.5% each year. Um, maybe we started to percent but so we have a, a steady increase of 2.5% over the prior year. So we have budgeted uh, for fiscal 20 at 270434 um, I believe it's being funded out of, out of our regular budget this year, and, and if we, I think it's important, you know, I know there's a lot of other considerations, but I just do want to connect this with our uh, borrowing, our, our ratings that we have a review coming up in May for our borrowing in July with Standard & Poor's, and this is a, a factor is whether we're keeping up with this fund. So I hope we'll be able to do this uh, through our uh, second bond borrowing too in a year and a half. So, so keeping this fully funded at this budget is pretty key to yeah. our borrowing coming up in May. Yeah, and a key part of it is that we set a plan and we're sticking with the plan. Mm -hmm. That seems to be as big a factor as anything else is that you've made a plan and you stuck with it. I thought that's, that's good. I'm glad we weren't overly ambitious. We had, this is actually, in some ways, a less ambitious plan than the original one set up, but we did that because it was reachable. It was some. It was one that we realized that we could stick to. If you can afford it this year, you can afford probably two percent and more the next year. And uh, apparently, that was uh, we we looked, That was a good way to go. <laughs> yeah. So the first four years of our borrowing of our funding strategy was to get to a level where we stopped the bleeding that we weren't adding to the future liability as we went along. So um, once we achieved that, we, we uh, uh, made, scaled back the increase to 2.5% per year until we hit certain milestones. And under the old accounting rules, GASB 45, um, this year, FY 2020 coming up, this is an important milestone because now we're on the downslope of paying this off on a more aggressive schedule. Uh, unfortunately, they changed the <laughs> accounting rules on us, so we need to meet with uh, Parker Elmore yeah. and, and 
doing check-ins, but this is an important achievement in FY 2020. This is something that we've been working for for a while. So it says there's a $7.7 .7 million un un roughly unfunded liability for OPEC. What, what was it when we started tackling this problem, like a ballpark number just so um, people watch? I think it was, uh, my best memory was when I jumped in, it was 7.1 and we got it down to 6.3 million and then the, the increase was due to the change in accounting. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so all I, you know, it looks like it went up, but it would have gone up even more if we, if we hadn't brought it down. So you're, we're you're starting over. kind of chasing the red. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you look on page 24, you got all that information about the unfunded liability was, was there with 7.2 in 2008, down to 6.7, called 6.8. Then 2012, 7.6, 14 was about a 50. Five hundred thousand dollars less than that, and then another decrease of about two hundred thousand, and then they changed the rules and it jumped right back up to seven point seven. So I'm mainly interested in the five thousand dollars that you requested. Just stabilization was that to try to reimburse stabilization for? That's, that's, is that you, David? Yeah, that was me. <laughs> that was David. This is a dance we do every year. <laughs> How that dance goes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you thought that putting it in the 900 budget that you were going to notice, that's about right. Yeah. yeah. Kind of kind of strategy. Strategy. Thank you. Thank you. So, huh? Wow. So one of the goals, you know, obviously I put it in when putting together the original budget, and the budget didn't balance. It was one of the easy choices to make to take it out in order to gain $5,000. But well, we did take uh, $260,000 out of stabilization in order to fund OPEB and FY19. If we, one of the stated goals of this budget is if we have excess uh, free cash in the fall, that we replenish that, uh, that contribution from stabilization. Mm -hmm. So it's still something that I'm looking for. And it's Thank still hard to do when other departments are in need of money and yeah. we already have a fairly good amount in stabilization the CPA account is pretty well mm -hmm. um, well off at this point also so there's still money out there in our accounts that um, seem to be quite stable more so than some of our other departments that need a little bit of cash I look forward to the debate uh, <laughs> and we have it every year don't we? Yes, we do. There's one more line, the police fire volunteer accident. Oh, yeah. Is that on the next page? I don't know if that was, yeah. It's kind of in an odd spot, so. So as you know, the we um, police and fire are not subject to workers' comp, so they need to be covered somehow. So this is where we cover that uh, expense, $45,000, no change from Last year, it seems to be in the historical bar ballpark of what we've needed to fund. So is that an insurance payment for 45000 or is this a kind of like yes, a Yes, it's, it's an insurance payment. Okay. 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 That's good. Any other, um, no serious questions? Mm -hmm. And then we'll skip to the 800 series. Yep. <laughs> The retirement, um, have you looked forward to the retirees coming down the line uh, for that figure? Uh, the retirement, I think uh, the assessment it comes from, yeah, it's, based, it's, not, it's based on the salary. So every year in October, we have to give them what is um, whatever's on the, the estimate for the total salaries for that year. Okay. So in 2018, October of 2018, I provide them with the estimated totals for the entire year. And then they it's about 26% um, assessment right now because, of course, they're building up their retirement account. Yeah. Kind of how we're doing our OPEB. So it's the same situation for the retirement system. So that retirement is going to Hampshire County Retirement Center. Exactly, yes for the retirees that will be in the future, current future. Set. Mm -hmm. 800. 800. 800. 800, there are two 
two um, budgets with an 800. The first are the state assessments. These are the charges levied against the town by the state and it shows up in the cherry sheet. This is uh, uh, water air pollution uh, assessment that's our, uh, in order to uh, pay our fair share to a state fund that uh, keeps the air as tidy as possible. PVTA assessment, $204,000. Motor vehicle assessment of $3,360. School choice assessment of $424,000 and change. And then our charter school assessment of $665,000 and change. These are numbers taken off the governor's cherry sheet. So these numbers will change. Um, we have no control over it, um, and uh, I'll keep you advised as the budget process goes from the governor to the House to the Senate, the conference committee to the governor, and then any override that may occur at the legislative session in July. And then the second budget is the offsets and overlay. Again, a lot of this information is derived right off of the cherry sheet. The school choice offset, this is $572,000 that goes to the school for their use in, in education. Library offset gets uh, $7,700 and that goes towards library programming. And then the overlay, which is the money that the assessors place on the recap sheet in order to cover any uh, shortfalls in tax collections or any abatements and uh, reduce the request by $10,000. And uh, the assessors told me that they're comfortable with that, uh, with that reduction. Okay. Any questions? Finance? No. Okay, thank you, David. And I think that is everything we were going to review in the budget. So at your next yes. meeting, we got to pull it all together. We got to come up with a unified budget to recommend to town meeting. Okay. Um, in the past, what we've done is thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In the past, what we've we've done at least a couple of times is where we had. Um, these discussions with department heads, the finance committee, and the select board. We had a, a list. The, <laughs> we had a list of some of the areas that seemed to be in need of possible re. Uh, well, uh, just another glance at it if we want to well, look back at it. There have been some people who, who made um, a relook, you know, mm -hmm. just to see where people have asked for additional monies here or there. Um, does it make sense to do try we, to pull that together from? Do we want to go? I have a one list I had kind of noted as we were going I've been through it. Notes in the, but do, yeah. do we want to go through that now, or do we want to do that at next meeting? But we have I to approve it at the next, next meeting. Yeah. Meeting for discussion. It would be nice if we were all looking at the same thing. So maybe, maybe the finance committee has a list. Do you guys have a list of items? And do you guys are meeting next week earlier in the week? I haven't scheduled the meeting yet. We were going to discuss that after and mm -hmm. schedule a meeting as soon as possible. But I think okay. one of the things you need to keep in mind before everybody came in and asked for an increase, we already had, had a set budget and it was already balanced. Yeah. Oh, I'm all well set. Yeah. Yeah. But so, it's just a question of, you know, for example. And I think we're still getting our um, cherry sheet uh, monies in right now, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you did mention that, but there was some yeah, house, increase in the house, house budget. House Ways and Means and actually increased Chapter 70, which is a very good sign because I was concerned that they were going to cut that. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot, of, I only have two numbers from House Ways and Means, and mm -hmm. there's a dozen numbers that could change on the uh, cherry sheet, and until we have a cherry sheet, we won't know if we can That's have nice. any or part of that $24,000 increase. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just we probably think won't know the day before special time. Yeah. Like usually, it time. usually it is. It's usually right. We don't usually get it till June yeah, or July. Usually, usually they, they produce it in the next week or so. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just thought it would be helpful to make sure that 
everybody's in agreement on exactly what it is that we're either deciding pointedly we heard you but we're not we're not going to be able to get that done but we want to carry it forward to the fall or we heard you thanks <laughs> or you know we really shouldn't be waiting for the fall on that one and do we need to try to move some other things around to make that happen for the fall town meeting I and mean, I think we owe it to the department heads to just do that one sweep um, um, and the, the thing too is we do have to approve the budget next week to get it onto the warrant yeah so we basically be doing that we wouldn't have unless we had another meeting before right before town meeting which I don't even know if we could do that with the budget mm -hmm. um, to approve it if we had a discussion so we're kind of in a little bit of a pinch but we right. could I could mean, do it next week we could do it next week we could have the discussion and approve it so can we make a list of uh, I guess who the so increases were yes yeah, select board issues and then finance committee issues okay. and then conference it out next week and just basically hash it out then and be done with it uh, that way we can approve it because okay. I think what we were trying to avoid is what we ran into with special time meeting where we had last minute vehicle requests and things exactly. like that that, yeah. that you guys weren't aware of mm -hmm. right. um, and that we weren't aware of until right before mm -hmm. um, and that, that way everything's set in advance of the last minute changes right mm -hmm. so. yeah that sounds good so mm -hmm. why don't we yeah. just um, I can put our list on next week's agenda and um, go from yeah, there what I have I was just gonna say if you yeah. don't mind I know you take much better notes than I think anybody's all yeah. in there and, um, <laughs> but maybe if you wouldn't mind typing it up and then we could compare it to any notes that we made just in case there's anything yeah missing. yeah and we can give it this funnel to, to David yeah yeah mm -hmm. I think that's probably the best way to do it mm -hmm. okay so finance committee if you're going to be meeting prior to next Wednesday we need to be posting tomorrow because Monday's a holiday and we can't count that Okay, thank you, David. You're welcome. Thank you. May I ask the chair if you could, instead of going to the town meeting warrant, could you take sidewalk yeah. and cemetery because of the chief and uh, yeah, let's do our that. DPW director here? Yep, thank you. Um, so why don't we do sidewalk first? Did someone where? Do you want to talk to this, Joyce? Did you have something? I didn't, I didn't do this. This was on the Wait, end. Yeah, we asked Chris we had to come in. Okay, we have Chris coming in, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. About costs. But the chief is also involved because it involves the fines and things, too, mm -hmm. right? Are you aware of that with the sidewalk? No? No well, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> you might be. I mean, it's, it says the, police, the chief of police and the director of public works um, or your designate either department would be in charge of the fines. So can I give a little bit of background of work? Sure. Yeah, go so, for it. So this past winter, we stopped removing snow from Route 9. And that was a decision we made with Chris and has a board uh, because of damage claims and because of the mess that they created when they put in the new sidewalks. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think last meeting, what we had talked about bringing Chris in for was to talk about uh, the cost of continuing to clear, say, West Street, Middle Street, D Street, the historic districts, or going to a new bylaw where everybody's responsible for their own uh, sidewalks in front of their houses. Um, Which, if you want to just throw in there, we did have a bylaw right. in the books already. Yeah, a long, long, from a mm -hmm. long time ago. A long okay. time ago. Um, and then I, I think that we're, well, I won't make any assumptions, but I know that <laughs> talking to Chris, we, we we had agreed between the two of us that we should not be responsible for doing Fruit 9. That's something the state should be responsible for. It's something that we should not be bearing the cost for. So whether that's on the state or on the homeowners, um, it, it's something the town, in my mind, we shouldn't be doing. But I'll let Chris kind of speak to what, what costs and what, what's involved in clearing the sidewalks in town. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> yes, um, in terms of side mode, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, it's very expensive for the town to get involved in clearing sidewalks. Uh, apart from the cost for material and employee, when you look at um, the winter months, um, 
many communities to avoid cost requires uh, what the board is trying to do, but update an ordinance to whereby homeowners or property owners or business owners are made to clear sidewalks. The town is obliged to clear sidewalks around schools, public buildings, um, senior centers, and so, and that is because of the responsibility of the town. Thereby, we also hold um, homeowners or business owners responsible where they, they, they are not by fining them and a very serious fine. So you find that uh, most communities use that thereby um, sidewalks are cleared for safety, sidewalks are cleared for, and then where um, towns that allow the public works to take that obligation, they tend to have a couple of uh, funds to either bring in uh, more people during the winter months, because that requires, for example, in the case of in the case of Hadley, we cannot get to sidewalks before 24, 48 hours because of uh, the roads, and so that window is also a critical window for a lot of uh, falls, liabilities, kids, elderly people, even sometimes and people walking to the bus stop. And so the general public do not understand the constraints we have in terms of manpower. The thinking is we're supposed to do that. So so you, you also have claims to the town. And so the town pays a lot of insurance claims because we don't have any legal standing to hold homeowners or business owners responsible. So that's why many uh, communities oblige make sure that homeowners are responsible. In terms of state roads, the same thing. Once the ordinance is in place, it covers those properties along state roads. And where they are not, uh, uh, where they, because the state is not, is not too good in enforcing those laws. So the local uh, communities tend to enforce the laws. And where we don't have such laws like an incident of Route 9, where we said uh, we're not going to plow the sidewalks. We even sent a letter to District 2. In their mind, in the priority list they have, is the list on their, list, uh, on their priority list. So except it becomes a major event where it, and it becomes a political or where the press gets involved, and then that's when you see the uh, mass DOT respond. Otherwise, it's left to the select board to give us uh, a guidance. And my recommendation is that we should have an ordinance where homeowners, business owners um, are responsible. And then the director of public works can be um, given the authority to issue summons if the chief of police feels that his men are tied down, because sometimes events may come up, his men may be tied down. And so, I'm happy that the chief is here. I don't know if the chief wants to add some, something to that. Uh, no, I would agree 100%. I, my only, um, well, I have one suggestion that maybe when, um, I think a lot of this, the, a good point to start would be information, informational, educational, get the information out there first. I think that Nixel, um, since we're going to be doing a big push with, with Nixle, it might be a good place to start to let people know this. And then the only question I guess I would have is, I think we're, we all agree that the state would have res should have responsibility for taking care of the sidewalks on state roads. Would a town bylaw allow Hadley to find people on state roads, even though the state yeah. is responsible for the do sidewalks? We, and, and I asked two or three times already, do we have any documentation from the state when they said, we gave you the sidewalks? We and it's ask, within the, <laughs> and no, they're within yeah. the state easement. So these are the same questions that Mike's trying to ask right now. The, we the, haven't uh, looked at the legal issue of the, the state sidewalks on state land, which they say they turned over to the town. If, if, they, if the town makes, if the town um, has an ordinance 
especially for example the slow uh, cyber um, because we have with night the state will be is a is a is a courtesy call sitting down with the district just to inform them this is the audience they they will not object to it because for them to object to it means that they have to come before the select board and give the town their own plan and they don't have personnel to do that okay. so so they usually uh, go along the only thing is they they, they will be informed they may have uh, uh, one or two contribution to it and in the case where the the they object the town can leave route now to whatever the state of oblige but the the once it is done we are this is a good time for education to us before the next snow season as the chief said but it doesn't mean that uh, you cannot make a regulation governing the use of uh, the sidewalk on route nine do we have any idea of the cost of the site of maintaining those sidewalks yes mr chairman because it's uh, an emergency we bring in two guys with machine, and uh, usually it's a time and a half. So uh, it, it, it goes from a simple call from, from the police. We bring in a guy, it's four hours call. Salt is, uh, is expensive. And uh, so we end up just to come in to take your sidewalk on when we are not even on the ground. You're talking about $1,000 easy. Because, per event. Yes, because we, we have to pay uh, our personnel are uh, union personnel, so we pay them time and a half. We also have to pay the on calls supervisor because he gets the call from the police. He has to respond to bringing personnel. And then when we are plowing snow, we don't respond on time. So sometimes the time, the next time we have to respond, we may spend more hours there for an eight-hour period. And uh, because it's sidewalk. Uh, not every machinery we have can go into that side. Um, so safety is very important and then time consuming. So, and because it's time consuming, it accumulates the pay because it, we're dealing with uh, personnel. For, so it's not, um, so these are the type of uh, costs that we, we cannot justify. So, and then sometimes we may never finish the sidewalk because Mother Nature brings up another snowy event so that's why that project is abandoned. We have to respond to the, and then we come back. Meanwhile, in the eye of the public, it looks as if we don't know what we're doing, or our professional standard is poor, but it's just because we have the same personnel we're trying to shift around. Yeah, because it's my experience, the sidewalks in the center of town, and they're plowed, plowed pretty quickly after an event. And we tend to respond to center of town, so it, town hall is good because uh, we, we even, sometimes <coughs> we even take a guy from a route and bring him to do this mm -hmm. because uh, it's the right thing to do it. The town hall has to be open to the public. Uh, the school has to be open to the public too. And so, but if you look at outside this scope area, the other side, it takes time for us to get to that location. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes businesses also call us thinking that we say our responsibility because to take it and then we have to educate them and um, sometimes the especially myself being a, a new personnel they remind me that sometime in the past they have the public works has done that and i keep telling them that yes it's possible in the past years in every uh, events have changed uh salt is more expensive today and uh, also public works of today is not the public works of 20 years ago or 30 years ago where you you have um, a lot of individuals Today, every every personnel is accounted for, and we also have more area to cover, more liabilities today than 30 years ago in terms of town responsibility. Mm -hmm. So my concern is that if we pass a, a bylaw, or a new bylaw, I should say, that says residents are responsible, I, I don't want to put the Route 9 state-imposed mess on those residents and businesses to be responsible for. I know that we have some re some businesses now, after every star snowstorm, do a great job of, of this past winter, even though we weren't doing the sidewalks, they were doing their own, yes. and they were doing a good job. And so, you know, if that's something they choose to do because it brings in pedestrian traffic to their business or it just looks more professional, then great, but I don't want to be going after businesses and fining them for the state creating a mess on the sidewalks in front of them. 
because that's the issue we're having. We're having, if you look at uh, Route 9 down here by the bridge, you've got uh, you know, a 30 foot wide road right. that's being pushed onto a sidewalk and now a homeowner is saying, what the heck am I going to do with three feet of ice and snow? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it, if we were to do a bylaw, I would want to you know, some, yeah, somehow exempt state routes and let you know, make sure that stays the responsibility of Mass DOT rather than put it on homeowners. That, that's that's the only concern I have. And so, you know, if we were to create a bylaw, yeah. I just want to make sure that's not going to put it on them. Another thing, Mr. Chairman, yep. I don't know if before the board, uh, before the board makes a final decision, if the board will authorize the third district or myself to to invite uh, the district to um, head of the district to, to the board meeting to discuss this matter, so that you can. You can probably hear from the state uh, they're thinking about it before you can. Do you think you can? Uh, do you have any relationship with them? Do you think no, I don't. I no. Don't. Okay. <laughs> if, 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 the, if the board authorizes, no, the talent. Yeah. <laughs> no, sometimes, 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 sometimes they may not show up, but at least we have a record that they were before you make the final decision. They were given opportunity to come into probably make their own case before the board. Yes. Yeah. John, go ahead. Yeah. I think this is outrageous about the state. It's in a layout. They plow the snow from the road on top of the sidewalk, and they want individuals and businesses to clean it. I think this is absolutely asinine. And far as the taxpayer paying to do the sidewalks, they've paid it over the years in the town. I don't have a sidewalk, but I'm a taxpayer, and still pay the DPW or whoever is doing that to plow that. Now you're going to push that onto a, a homeowner Say, especially the elderly, how do you expect them to either hire someone or to do it themselves? Thank You're you. creating a hardship to a lot of people. You don't think you yeah, are. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Thank you. Yeah. But Jane, it's a, it's or, well, Valerie had her hand up. Go ahead. But just a quick thing. It is an article. Yeah, it's an article. It's an yeah. article. So, you know, people need to come, need to speak their piece. Mm -hmm. If they don't want the article, then they need to say and so. What's the vote? Is it two thirds or is it a majority? Majority. 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 Okay. Mr. Chairman, how did it get to be an article? We put it on there. This has been Who a did? running issue. Who did? The select board did. There's the trouble well, I Not think Not all the select board did. I voted against it, and I'm still against it. Good. The taxpayer's been paying for it for 35 years. I've been working for the town. The problem was the last DPW director got rid of the piece of equipment that we cleaned the sidewalks with, and we bought this other machine, and we got it into winter and found out it didn't work. That's the problem. I, don't think I, maintained, them, I maintained them myself a few winters when we had a lot of snow. I don't think that's the only problem, uh, Mr. Chairman, that the board and my predecessors saw the equipment. Mm -hmm. I can come before the board to request money to get such equip equipment that would do a good job for sidewalk. Yeah, sure, but sure. Uh, it's too simplistic that way. Because, for example, we have um, the state road side, uh, road nine. Uh, we also have other sidewalks, which are local sidewalks. Some of them uh, does not need major repairs. So we can't even put machine. Yeah. Number two, the in terms of uh, to bring them up to code. If we have to repair the sidewalk today, we have to not only put uh, you know ADA style. Uh, is is a, we have to put that. We also have to make sure that uh, that um, yeah four feet wide because most of our side side uh, sidewalks you know three feet. Some areas are even smaller than three. Feet. Yeah. So it's gonna it's gonna be more expensive. Plus. Yeah. We need, even if we have the machine, the number of employees we have right now in DPW, with the with the snow uh, air, uh, area that we have to cover, we, we can still do the job. But the thing is that it's still going to be behind, and the board is going to get a lot of calls. I, 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 many of them will be wondering why is DPW. Thirty-five years ago is different. Many roads in thirty-five years ago were not paved roads. We're not all the, the, the regulation or the legal standing or cost for liability wasn't much 35 years ago. Today, it's, a, it's expensive. Yeah. Valerie? So anyway, oh, no. Oh, I, oh, I, 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 I didn't finish before you interrupted okay. me to the chairman, okay? So uh, originally, the state had their plans and they 
showed up with what they got for sidewalks right now. When the engineers came in from District 2 just last two months ago or so, Chris, and I wasn't on a meeting with you, the engineers were there at the sidewalks, I specifically asked them for the next section what they were going to do with the sidewalks, and I guess they've already realized their mistakes because they're going with a six-foot buffer, they said, and a six-foot sidewalk for the next section of this project. This is from East This East is Street. going to be from East Street. Middle Street? Street? Yeah. Well, basically from Middle Street, wherever they ended off, mm -hmm. to South Maple Street. Mm -hmm. So they, they realized the problem. I don't know if District 2, maybe we need to get them in here and see if they plan somewhere down the line of fixing from here to the bridge. Because it just doesn't work the way it is. And like I said, it's a real issue whether they're responsible for the sidewalks on Route 9 in their easements. What are we going to do? Find the state for not cleaning their sidewalks in 24 hours? I already see that coming down. No, well, and then we have people walking there too. You can't so. find the state. Mm -hmm. but, but, but what do you Mr. mean you Chairman? can't find the state? If well, it's they, their they, property and the sidewalk is on their right, property, yes. then they right. need to maintain it. And we can find them for it. All right, I know we're uh, never seeing any let's money. Let's move on. <laughs> Valerie, go ahead. So I just wanted to add to this. Um, we spend a lot of time in, uh, in Minnesota, and in our neighborhood in St. Paul, they have this kind of a law where all the neighbors are required to take care <coughs> of their own piece of the sidewalk. And the bottom line is that in the wintertime, nobody walks on the sidewalk. Everybody walks in the street because the reality is that not everybody is going to, you know, you know, fines or no fines, not everybody is going to plow their sidewalk. Or maybe somebody is sick and they can't, or maybe they plow their sidewalk, but there's a whole lot of ice and it's very dangerous and slippery. So yeah. those of us who walk in that neighborhood, we're all walking in the street. Yeah, and that's what I'm worried about is people walking out yeah. right nine, you know. So. But interestingly, the first year this year that they plowed the sidewalk going over the bridge, Yes. Yeah. 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 And it this is the first, first year, year they've ever done that. Down to and DOT did that. that yeah. yeah. Jane? Well, it's my understanding that the town owns the sidewalks on West Street and Middle Street. Yes. When I was a property yeah. owner there. So now you're asking the homeowners to shovel your sidewalks. Yeah. I don't yeah. think that's right. Yeah. Especially on West Street, where you have a lot of elderly people. Right. West I, Street, Middle Street, most of them are. are I feel like we could go on all night going yeah. back and forth on this. So I, I, going to town I don't know. It's going to go to town meeting. It's on the warrant. We just, we'll have to settle at a town meeting, and somebody can make a motion to vote, and we can take a vote on it. And I don't know what else to say because we can Chairman, go back how, and forth all the, night. How, Mr. Chairman, how is your board? Is your board supporting this? Because I don't see no new expansion to sidewalks that were here two years ago or five years ago. Same thing. You guys used to do that. No problem. Yeah. Nobody said nothing. Nobody, nobody complained. Nobody did nothing. All of a sudden now, it's a big problem. All right. Thank you, John. And that started with yeah, the Yeah, well, state. we are going to take a vote later on the warrant, so where we're standing. So. Good. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. And did, do you want to do cemetery cemetery reorganization funding? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm back again to the board. If you recall, about two weeks ago, the board approved the DPW reorganization. So we have to bring in the cemetery. And then we, come up, we came up with building and cemetery division. Mm -hmm. uh, we also uh, came up with um, the cemetery and building maintenance form and position. And also we also requested the board to give us a skilled labor. Thank you. A skilled labor position to, uh, to assist in the, in the maintenance of the cemetery. Uh, the, the chairman of the cemetery commission was also present. He also suggested uh, if the board would approve going out, getting a contractor to do the cemetery. But uh, I'm here, Mr. Chairman, to um, ask the board to approve our funding because we added some, because of these two dispositions, our budget was kind of changed. 
I am with you of the opinion to hire a, la a skilled laborer who, and I also had a breakdown format where the, um, the, skilled, the skilled laborer um, fund half would come from cemetery, one quarter from building maintenance, and one quarter from highways, snow and ice fund. So this laborer will be active for 12 months in a year, plus the, um, <coughs> my experience with cemetery is just, it's more than just uh, mowing the cemetery. We also have to do fire the cemetery. <coughs> we have to uh, clean, uh, pick up leaves. Sometimes even do loom and seed. <coughs> we have to do some paint work. Um, so, the, so that's just why I am of the opinion. And in the winter months, this skill laborer can be put on the on the snow route, or as we just discussing, there's a, a somebody who can also assist us if the board decides to go on the route of we doing side, or we also have other streets. Um, so so this individual, uh, in my view, on the long run, <coughs> the town saves more by authorizing us to fund a skill laborer position, as opposed to getting a contractor because in a contractor case, you have to write a contract. Now you have to uh, stipulate how many times you want the loan to be moved. And anything else, anything you want the guy individual to do, it has to be in writing. And sometimes we cannot anticipate what may happen. For example, we may have a couple of wings and we have a lot of tree limbs all over the place. Now it may not necessarily be in the contract. Or you know, it may be in the contract for him to come and mow the loan and uh, the cemeteries. Twelve times in a month or twelve times in a year. I will need to mow the cemetery sixteen times. So it, it tends to be very expensive. Because in the, in those kind of areas, um, I think the chairman of the cemetery commission, in my view, was, was looking at it from the view of the current, uh, the way it is done right now, and uh, we are trying to go above where the way it is done right now, and so that will give us a better handle with the cemetery. So that is what I'm here, Mr. Chairman, because the last time the board. Approved the board did not. We didn't come. With, the board did not give us a specific approval either to go contract or to give us the skill level. Yeah. Yeah. It seemed like the contracted number went up pretty substantially for yes. this year. Is that what's? The yes, it went up because the current, the weight is not currently. They had about eighteen thousand dollars, and. Uh, we also found out that that $18,000 will, was, if to do it right, that that number it doesn't make any it doesn't bring any it doesn't make any value. Mm -hmm. uh, so now that the department the, the DPW is handling the cemetery, and we're trying to bring it up to regulation and to bring it up to where it should be. It's one reason why if we go if we be be that the contract is going to be very expensive compared to what we have right. Now. Yeah. And we are not, uh, we also cannot control the vendor outside the, the limit of the, or the scope of the contract. But with a, a skilled laborer, we have a 12 months obligation to, to do many things. Yeah. I mean, I like the option of having more DPW staff. I can talk amongst the board, but I, I think we have to talk about it because it's, increases the overall budget and we haven't made any decisions on the overall budget yet. Um, My only concern is that uh, DPW on the priority list for budgeting is what in next year or the year after. Mm -hmm. And so um, I don't know if we can do a, a one year contract or a two year contract or whatever in the meantime before we because I know hold off one more year on this. Yeah, because mm -hmm. we've got so many other things that are and we talked about the foreman position already. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm concerned with. It's just where is where are we gonna, how are we gonna afford all this right now? But, uh, but that's a concern. Uh, yeah, the, there is a, well, the town meeting gave us this this obligation, and for DPW to do this right, Mr. Chairman, this is why it's gonna cost this money because up to this point, it wasn't done. Uh, in my view, it, uh, it wasn't done uh, up to what I up to spec or up to law or up to or the tower was not protected. 
living with that 18,000 dollars. And so there was, now we're trying to make sure that the town is protected. And also to put it in, a, in the right way it should be. Um, so that's just why this, this little, well, I call it, it's a, it's a minimal increase in the sense that we're not asking the town to give us money for equipment. At this first phase, we can also use highway equipment here and there. As opposed to we, if we had come to say, okay, as a new division, we need a couple of trucks or a couple of uh, a vac truck to vacuum leaves or more. No, we, we have those in there. Chris, isn't, aren't you asking for option B, which is $97,000? Yes. You didn't. You didn't just say minimal next to ninety-seven thousand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, uh, how much the, are we paying right now? <laughs> yeah. The, the if you, if you look at it, it's um, we have um, the foreman position, mm -hmm. which it, we most of the foreman, foreman position money is already in our budget, right? Because of the building maintenance. Yeah. So the. The where we, we have zero to to not is the skill level position. And then the then if you add the um, benefits, that's when it gets to that ninety seven thousand. Right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. So you're adding the benefits in and you're taking one third, one third, one third from water and sewer again. And then the next thing you know we're gonna be well, raising the water no, and that's sewer not, rates. No, again. That's not that's not for the level. That's not that's not the level. The, for the labor for cemetery, we're taking half, half of the salary goes to cemetery, one quarter to building and maintenance, and one quarter to highway. It's not nice. So, I, I'm leaning toward contract for a short-term contract until the uh, budget priority comes around for DPW, just because we, you know, we hired an HR That's what person. We and we've got, you know, I know. Yeah. 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 Like I said, yeah, I, I think these are great, good ideas, and I think they're good looking for it. I just don't, don't know where we're, how we're going to get the money it. for it. That's the big thing. If the, if the board authorizes to go out for beach, for culture, then we will do that. Uh, because we want to be able to get somebody in place before it's been established. established. Yeah. Right. Is, uh, does anybody, I don't have the list. Or when does DPW come up next? Next One year. year. Next year? Next year. Yeah. No, next so year. FY21. Okay. Mm -hmm. So can we do a, a contract? One year contract? Or I actually, think that's all they are anyway. They go year by year. Yeah, they go year by year. Yeah. The maintenance yeah. contract. So let's go out. July first to June thirtieth. Yeah, they just go year can by make year. Make a motion. Yeah. I'll make a motion that we effectively stay the course with uh, contracting this out for the coming fiscal year, but with a commitment to readdress this as part of the overall staffing when we look at DPW in twenty twenty one. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, abstain. Mr. Chairman, I have a quick question. Go, the go. formal position, the board agrees that we should, um, we should establish that position and uh, finance it, fund it for this FY20? I believe based on your that, that PowerPoint yes. slide, right. we the voted. Board Yes. And correct me if I'm wrong. We voted in favor of the. I'm sorry, I was just trying to pull yeah, it up so I can see it. A cemetery foreman, yeah, the body. Yeah. The cemetery foreman yes. and building maintenance yes. foreman. Yes. We approve the DPW general foreman. Also. If we are able to find funding. the funding. The funding. Yes, we, correct. Yes. yes. So there, we we did approve both. Yes. It was just finding the <coughs> resources to fund all those. My understanding is that the. Foreman can be absorbed in the current yes, budget. but the cemetery right. foreman. Yes, right. and uh, I and that's posted. Right, and realistically, the um, what was that other position? The, the, DPW, the DPW general. general. Yeah, the DPW general. Is, we're not going to have the money to do it this, this time around. No, so yeah, we look at it at the earliest in the fall. Yeah, so may, maybe fall time, but otherwise, it's it's basically we authorize the reorganization, but we don't have the money. The money. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. The board, that's yeah. what the board said. Yeah. If this body will fund the general format, but mm -hmm. I'm just focusing on the form, building and cemetery yeah. form. So, yeah, because if we go contract, he or she will be the one to help to administer that contract. Yeah, 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 and I think it's a great growth area for next year. So, so is his direction 
right now because now I'm confused. Are you going to are we directing him to hire a cemetery foreman at this point to oversee the contractual services? Well, or you, is that the foreman um, that's vacant? Vacant vacated right now at this point are we filling that position um, to oversee that at this point let me pull up the organizational yeah so we're missing a foreman correct correct yes. in building maintenance and cemetery yes. department yeah. right but right now I think it's a position funded. with the DPW is open correct the DPW one I would think would be more important than the cemetery one right now I right thought now. that's what you guys voted on yeah. well, it's a building maintenance yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 so I think the DPW general foreman that's shown in, in the red. chart <clears throat> yeah. that that's what we said go ahead and hire yeah. and it's posted right the DPW general foreman is posted right now no it's not posted you said if we have money I thought that one was the one if we had money money uh, but the the building building the is the field, field superintendent. superintendent. Uh, we, we, ha we, we have a candidate who uh, oh, I'll be uh, talking to the uh, town administrator this week, tomorrow, oh, yeah. to give us a curry. <coughs> we have an individual we want to bring before to do some curry check. But, yeah, we, have, we interviewed this individual yesterday at the third interview. And um, we are going through the, um, these references right now. And then uh, we'll be bringing him for curry check. But um, that, that's the the field superintendent, that is the one we have. That is funded, it's already, the money is in the budget. Right. So perhaps in the fall, we can fund a half year of a DPW general foreman. Mm -hmm. Right. But right now we don't. But right now we don't. Right now we, don't. But right now we can't, yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but, but is the board authorized to go ahead and fill the building maintenance cemetery foreman position? I know the board approved it last no, time. We have, the money, we have the money to fill it. Because yeah, yeah, of the it, building it, maintenance um, money is in the budget, and then, but we also that, have that, that was going to be approved in this in twenty twenty budget, yes, correct? Yes. Yeah. So once that budget is approved, if that's available, yes. yes okay. Right. Mm -hmm. David, is that so? Right now, we can cover that in the existing budget as far as the building maintenance cemetery foreman. Yeah. FY twenty. The cemetery yeah. foreman. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Good. I don't think we need any other votes on that. Correct. Yeah. All right. So the so the board authorized me to go ahead one year bid for contract. The, the contract. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. And then we'll have to, you know, we'll be discussing that because we have the twelve thousand. I think I don't know. Yes, that's I what I'm looking at the budget. The board. There are many amount. I it, when I appear before the board. Yeah. We requested that if the board can give us some of the money that the town administrator took. We have a 12500 We also have various 5000 from that we were requesting. Yeah. I, I know the board has not made a decision on those. And that's what we we're going to discuss next week is those yeah. issues. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <coughs> thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, thank, thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. All right. Marijuana. Is it, are you here for the marijuana? Adult use marijuana <laughs> license <laughs> process? <laughs> I thought you were just discussing oh. uh, actual vendors. I can't advocate for any person. The use of it. Well, <laughs> that too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, have you read this? The bylaw and everything? Yeah. The, the, how about the proposal the for um, a, to, to join a joint uh, host community agreement? Well, I, yeah, I, I actually assisted with with some of the uh, the the last one, so I have you know, some experience and some knowledge. I don't know what the new ones look like if they look the same or not. This is this or an RFP to go out. You know, we put this RFP out. Mm -hmm. I guess we're jumping into it. Put the RFP out, and then people would bid on it, so to speak, right. and put an application <coughs> together to present. Maybe David can. Yeah, so we have a we have a by we have two bylaws on the warrant. Uh, the first one has to do with the public consumption of cannabis. Now the planning board wrote this. You've reviewed it. You've approved it. I, on town meeting floor, <coughs> planning board is very likely, like they did the last time, to turn to the select board and say, "Oh no, it's your article. Why don't you speak to it?" So. We, we want to make sure that we're conversant with that particular article. 
The other is a dynamic that's happening right now with uh, the anticipation that we will pass, either we will pass a zoning bylaw having to do with adult use marijuana or we will not and then the moratorium will expire. It will not be extended. So the vendors, the potential vendors are, are contacting me and there have been four already. Yeah. I know. Saying, so. we want to negotiate with you for a host community <coughs> agreement so that we can get in line early in Boston in order to get our, our uh, licenses in order so that we can establish a business in the town of Hadley. My question to the board is, is that we have two licenses to give out. Do we want to give it out as easy as first come, first serve? Or do we want to think about giving it out to the vendor who has the most to offer for the town of Hadley? Yeah. I, I'm for the latter. I yeah. think that uh, the discretion of the board should be used to determine who is the best fit for the town and what mm -hmm. we can get out of it because um, you know, first in line isn't necessarily the best. Yeah, and just to note, I don't know if you guys have read the complete mm -hmm. bylaw that's in the warrant, but it says complete applications for special permits and site plan approvals for marijuana establishments will be processed in the order they are filed with the town. However, so it's kind of first come first. Yeah, that's first come first serve in our bylaw. But the caveats are is a copy of an approved host community agreement. So that's something they have to have with the select board, correct, before they can. Right. apply for the special mm -hmm. permit so that's kind of where we have yeah, the sure. leverage as the board mm -hmm. to allow them to establish a business or not I guess my concern is 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 there a way that we can do this where we put a deadline for people to put in their packages to, to, for the town and up and then say okay that's it no more no one else can, can apply we'll have a narrow window of time and that way we can objectively look at the, pa the packages and choose the best packages. Or none, if or we want. Yeah. 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 Or does it have to be a rolling? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that way it's completely up to our discretion, and that way we can get the best fit for the time. That's the RFP that I've put yeah. together for you. Is, uh, I patterned it off the towns of Winston and Tynansboro. This is an unusual approach and will be unfamiliar to the vendors of adult-use marijuana. But it, I think it serves the best interest of the town because we're asking for more information in this RFP than the state will ask for, particularly having to do with finances. And we don't want to be in a situation where we give a license out to a vendor who simply does not have the financial structure mm -hmm. to carry forward the plan and then not being able to give that license to so more deserving. I mean, personally, I feel like we only have two of these to offer. We need the best possible candidates. We don't want just want to get first come, first serve, and then find, you know, Look behind North, several months. Look at Northampton, how one of them was a disaster that started off in just a mass chaos with having a, tons of police details and crowds and stuff like that. And then some of the other communities, how they've done very well and very orderly. That's my concern, is I don't want to have a mess on our hands, too. And Chief Mason, do you? Does, does the RFP require that or request that the person filing uh, design their own community host agreement or is there room for negotiation in that? There's room for negotiations, but it uh, but we require, there's a couple of minimal requirements. Features yeah. of the uh, state law, one of which is the host community agreement can be for no more than five years although the law is silent about renewals, so we want to tease that out of them. Is so how are you going to carry your payments to the town beyond the five years? And then the other is, how are you going to structure the host community agreement so that <coughs> we don't have to do the auditing process that um, limits us to charging no more than 3% of our actual costs. That's a big burden for a small community to absorb. So put it on them to do that. Okay. And then everything else can be a matter of negotiation, but try to make this as easy for us as uh, possible. So when you lay these out in front of you, you'll be able to see basically what they're, yeah. what they're offering. And, and, and some of them, a couple of them are well established already anyway that probably have contacted you, so I, I 
I think you're gonna I think we're gonna have a wide variety of offers yeah mm -hmm. to look at the, the one and question consider. I had is if we do if we're looking for these RFPs are, is there any confidential pro portions versus public portions as far as releasing this information and could that it's all prevent public. It's, all public. it's all public yeah I just don't know if that will prevent people from applying because of that reason. Well, I think I think that that's something to think about because this is a new and different process that most people will not be familiar with, and so that could act as a as a deterrent because we're asking for a lot of work here with no guarantee that they're going to get the legal license at the other end. Um, but I think I think that's a better route to go than to just say first come first serve so yeah. if, if we have two licenses to give out and let's just say we get you know five submissions of a packet and we decide that nah, they're not really what we're looking for um, by not giving out any licenses until we can I guess uh, put out a new RFP are we imposing some sort of some sort of moratorium where we're going to get in trouble all right, do we have to give out the licenses, or can we take our time through this process and take as long as it needs to find the right fit? In the RFP, you have the absolute right not to accept any of the proposals. Okay. Within the RFP, you have objective criteria that you can uh, decide that one or more proposals are unacceptable. It's just like we hired the OPMs or whatever. Yeah, Similar it's, it's, criteria. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. Long as, so long as we stick to a process, we, we should be fine. But it, I'm just saying, since the moratorium is not going to exist anymore, are we going to get in trouble with, say, the state or somebody else right. by, by not, not issuing, option. by taking our sweet time? Because let's just say, and I'm not advocating for this, but if it takes us a year to find the right fit, is the state going to come after us and say, you guys are not issuing the licenses you were supposed to be? That's possible. Okay. That is a possibility. But if we have well, a rating system, uh, I mean, right. I think yeah. they'd be more concerned if we were just like, yeah, I don't like that blue shirt. Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, and that's not the case. We yeah. have criteria. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's we'll see why it wouldn't bear similarity to liquor licenses, as long as you're not arbitrarily refusing just to yeah. show that we just don't want these businesses in town. Right. Right. I don't see why you can't. And, and, and honestly, this is a multi-million dollar business. Most likely, uh, <coughs> having to fill out an RFP like this to establish it doesn't seem like we're asking too much no, of those people. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's a long process you're going, you're involved with. So. So I have not shared this RFP with you, so I'll be happy to do so. And you, you and I can just review it. Yeah, because I think there was some security and public safety elements on yeah, there. Yeah, I'm aware the bylaw does does require certain security. Mm -hmm. It requires them to well, be I'm willing to meet with you and yeah. all that other stuff, too. It actually has a lot of, of Board of Health things in here yeah. also that, mm -hmm. you know, they definitely should oversee as the, uh, what their plans are for a renewable energy plan, water management plan. Again, that involves our DPW water management, how much water they're going to be using, odor control, neighbors, uh, things of that nature. So there's you know, a multitude of, um, certainly I, I think this is going to be probably the biggest part of our town meeting is going to be the topic of the marijuana use in the bylaws. So can I make a motion that we pursue the RFP avenue of issuing uh, marijuana licenses um, subject to the board having the discretion to uh, not issue or issue as we see that. You know, second that um, and encourage a copy of this to go to public safety as well as the board of health. Yeah, for sure. So they're aware of it ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the uh, clarification on the process. Now I can answer the telephones. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, any uh, further discussion? Well, I mean, if and if the board of health or. Uh, Safety's got any issues with it? We need to address them also. Do do we want to have anything before we s release this to the public? What do we want? Or with this vote, are we able? Is David able to give this to prospective vendors? This is just a draft, right? This is the draft. This is a draft, so I need to tighten it up. Yeah. Um, okay. I'll report back to the select board when I. I, uh, I would like the RFP looked over by. Our lawyers, uh, I council, think. council, town council, council okay. before we give.
give it out to anybody. I think if you tighten it up, it should go to them just to make sure. Okay. So, so do we want to modify the motion at all that we have a final approval or? Yeah, well, we need a final approval. Yeah, I'm just saying, wanted yeah. to vote that we go this this route here to, yeah. with the RFP rather than a first come first serve. Yeah. That, that right. we have the sole discretion to issue or not issue. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're defining the process. Okay, there. yeah. All right, <laughs> any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. As it relates to the other bylaw, just mm -hmm. really quickly, mm -hmm. um, you may want to get the information out there that this this bylaw that was written by the planning board it already exists, so that probably should be one of your talking points. But and say it now on camera, it is already a bylaw here in Hadley. They just um, went out with, I think, I believe they got it from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, um, a bylaw that most other communities are using now and have adopted since the recreational marijuana um, changes. <coughs> so all it is is just better language, more um, up-to-date information. So that And, and didn't they say too at the planning board that, that it really needs to be passed because it's already something that's in the place. moratorium is the moratorium up in July correct, correct. June first June, June first but that's what David said that if you basically wide open if, if we didn't pass right. it right yeah. so yeah. I mean they're we're, really encouraging that it does pass right. yeah. yeah wherever you can buy a gummy one. bear right now you can buy adult use marijuana if you don't have the sodium bylaw in place mm -hmm. okay need some public Thank information you. about that yeah mm -hmm. definitely yeah. All right, thank you. Do a, can, can you take some for Jane so she could, any senior updates? Yeah, that's what I was going to do. Thank thank do we want to do senior center updates? Yeah, thank you. Let's, sorry, go ahead, Jane. Senior center is moving along. There is a fence, if you haven't noticed, yeah. and a porta potty. <laughs> <laughs> but it's locked, so you can't use it. Um, and they're doing the um, erosion control today and tomorrow and they are meeting with Conservation Commission Friday morning and to get their approval and then the big machines come in on Monday and they'll start grading. And uh, we're hoping to break ground and start excavating foundations the following, the following week. week, the 22nd. Right. So we're hoping to have the building permit mm -hmm. next Friday, a week from Friday to be able to proceed. And the building committee is meeting in two weeks and we are going to have a date for you then for the grand opening ceremonies or the groundbreaking ceremonies or whatever you call it and we're also going to try and figure out where we want to put the sign because so, most most construction projects you see the sign and the site right. in this project that's not a possibility to see the sign you have to be behind the hooker school if you put it in front of the hooker school you can't see the site so it's something the building committee is going to work on. So realistically with a 30-day notice you're probably talking about the end of May yes, early time June. period, early June. Okay. Yeah, we were talking what do we want to kind of have, what kind of setting do we want to have it and what in the background, you know, so mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. we're going to talk about that How many chairs yeah. and how many officials do we really want to invite? I mean, I made up a quick list. It looks like 100 people by the time you get all the dignitaries that normally get invited to things yeah. like the governor and the governor's wife and the assistant lieutenant governor mm -hmm. and the, you know, elder affairs and the council on aging and all the local council on aging directors and mm -hmm. all the Hadley officials and all, you know, there's a lot of people there. Yeah. And then there are the town people who will want to. All right. Uh, library. Library. Uh, yep. So library, we will be going out to bid on April 24th. Um, the trustees, my understanding is, last night agreed and voted voted on and agreed to the ordering of the alternates. So that was kind of the remaining item before um, it goes out to bid. So April 24th, um, X number of weeks for the bids to be returned uh, believe the last week of May is when they expect to be doing that bid opening um, and then hopefully we'll be off and running beginning of June and have a date for the beginning of the demolition nice. so that'll be part of the bid 
and, and just one more thing, I was looking at my notes about the senior center is the Memorial Day Parade. There's some talks in the works of where that's going to be um, staged. Gene is working on an alternative plan. Mm -hmm. So I think Gary's going to... Gary was in contact with her too, with her. so... Mm -hmm. He's like moving the Legion informed, yeah. but the site is no longer available. We can use the front of the Legion and part of Route 9, and we could probably, they were talking about using Middle Street. Or East or Street. East Street. Or East East Street. Street. Look at Northampton. We always used to line up like a, a Triangle yes. Street in, in Florence. Florence. Yeah. And then all come out from there. We yeah. could do that down here. Yeah, we could do that at East Street. How about too. Hopkins and just coming up behind Russell School and just starting at the center of town rather at the Legion. Oh, that would be yeah. such a short parade. <laughs> the Legion wouldn't like See that. See what I'm saying? Yeah, they want to go by the Legion, right? They want to go by the Legion. Legion, Legion. Yeah. 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 So, so I think the north end, north of Route 9 on East Street is the place to... Mm -hmm. They could stop yeah. traffic there. Yeah. Free yeah, I mean, we came all the way from Mill Valley for a 300, so... Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. well, we'll work on that. Fire? Fire substation. No, I'm done. Uh, we go again before the planning board uh, on the 16th next Tuesday night, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll go from there and see how that goes. Um, my understanding is that they're with the election, um, and the fact that one of the sitting members of the planning board is no longer there. That for these some of these projects that are in the middle of hearings. Uh, they may have to rethink how those happen with a new member on board. I don't know if anybody saw. Um, I think Jim Maximoski was in contact with Joel Bard on the issue. So, so just mentioning that, that well, there may be. Have to reopen them. Yeah. I think there may be some delays. The email that we just got in this meeting basically says the hearings have to start from scratch for the public hearing process, according to uh, Joel Bart. Yeah. Well, I mean, they can move it along, of course, but they have to go through the legal motions. Can I bring up the line painting in this portion? That, sure. Okay. So the um, Legion has asked that we stripe their parking lot, paint the parking spots, uh, because now that the fencing is up, they're a little bit more restricted on, on what area they can use for events and people park and take up three spots and it's inefficient. So um, we have the $75,000 <coughs> that we agreed to. Um, it was requested that we paint those lines now rather than later. Um, and I said I would bring it and, and ask that question with the understanding that that would count against their $75,000. There's any concerns or whatever. who approached you? Uh, Steve Devine. And do we know that that was an official request? It's I mean, not the commander. I was just, I was just wondering, um, should it come from the commander? Or? Um, it wasn't from the commander, but it let was. me have <coughs> let me have a conversation with uh, Commander Wood because because okay. we're got, supposed to be that's supposed to be and and he knew that Phil Palumbo was supposed to be involved with all this, and I'm sure that Richie would have called me. I'll call him. Let me call him and see. I think the issue is that painting the lines and then digging up to do the underground and repaving is just a, a waste redundancy of money. and a waste, a waste of money. Well, because if the parking lot's going to be paved, then it'll be need, needed to be lined. This is going point. to be their last uh, Wednesday night dinner coming up next week. They won't have one in May, yeah. so next week will be their last uh, monthly dinner. So let me let me call him. Can we, uh, if we need to take a vote, can we vote pending your conversation with them? So that way, if that's what they really want done, it can be mm -hmm. get underway. Is that something we can as long as I recognize that. Right, it's counting against their. It's counting against. Who's going to do it? The budget. I don't understand have to why be. they wouldn't just go out there with a spray can. Yeah. <laughs> Again, point, I will call okay. them and let you know. I'll call him tomorrow. We do have a meeting yeah, next we have week. Yeah, Wednesday. Is that and you said when is their dinner? No. Wednesday. Yeah. It is on Wednesday. On the 17th, not yeah. the 24th? 17th. Okay. It's the third Wednesday of every month. Okay, right, that is the third Wednesday. Okay. 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 And those are those updates. Town meeting warrant. All right. Review.
Thank you, Jane. Okay, sure. Where, we Where did we leave off, David? Um, <clears throat> there are only a couple of articles left for the uh, select board to uh, comment on. Articles 8 and 9 are the budget. You're still working on that. Article uh, 15, the land preservation for Shala. Um, there's two components so to that article 14, which is a CPA. Don't typically comment on this. But 15 is non-CPA related funding of $150,000. That's coming out of TDR transfer of development rights and the conservation land trust. Any concerns about <coughs> anything unusual about this property compared to anything else we've ever approved? No, it's, uh, it's good land up in the north end of town, which is one of the target areas for C uh, APRs. Uh, without the additional 50000 the CPA money is not enough to affect an APR. So kind of joined at the waist there. So is that our $150,000 we're paying towards this? Yes, but that comes out of TDR and uh, Conservation Land Trust. And how much does it, is it in, is it in APR so now? It's not in APR right now. 56590 oh, from TDR and 93410 from Conservation Land Fund. So why are we paying for this? Why are you paying for it is so yeah. that you can, the town can get the property into APR and permanently protect it? Yeah, it's just a percentage, right? And who's it? It's our share. But it, we, but usually, don't we usually have the um, balance of the APR of knowing what their share is going to be? That's what I was, I was trying to figure out, the sharing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That, this yeah, doesn't seem right here. Typically it's 90-10, so the count town kicks in 10% and the state kicks in 90%. Yeah. Right. So why are we picking up such a big percentage of this one? Did they add but, more but land to it? Is there another parcel or something? This would be approximately 10% of the entire uh, development rights. We have, so but, but the article before 14 is $210,000 out of APR for what looks like the same property. That's right, because the CPA, CPA demands a match, and CPA does not want to have uh, all the money in one article. They want to keep their article separate from and the, from the matching article. Did conservation recommend this? Yes. Okay. So the conservation and CPA recommended it. Yeah. Okay. And TDR, is that a... What's the balance in that account, or is that? TDR is seventy-seven thousand three sixty-three and sixty cents. After the hundred fifty. No, this is the total balance right now. So uh, you you will pretty much wipe it out. Using the whole thing. Yeah, because there's another article. So is that when does that get replenished? But that is what TDR is for. So yeah. for things like that. So and then the, the next. Development the project that comes. Oh, next development, yeah. yeah. <coughs> Same thing, 16 yep. split between the two also? 16 and 17? Yeah, 16 and 17 is the need bala. The first part is the CPA funding and the land preservation is the non-CPA funding. Okay. And that's in the center of town, that's off of East Street? Yeah. It's behind, behind two, isn't it? Yeah. It runs abuts Bim Bim's property? Uh, it abuts Bim Bim's, it abuts Wayne Six, it abuts Waskevich's. the Young Men's Club. In Waskevich's. Oh, uh, yeah, Tanny Waskevich, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tanny, uh, Christic. Christic, yeah. And so this goes into preservation, too? Yep. Okay. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve um, Article 15. Second. 14 and 15. You might as well do them all. Yeah. Well, I thought we didn't right. vote on the CPA one. You can if um, you want. You 15, don't 15 and yeah. 17. Yeah, I mean, we can recommend it. It's okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 And that's for both 15 both and 17. Yeah. Correct. Okay. 
sidewalk uh, bylaw, that's something that's still under consideration. Mm. <clears throat> Is there any way on that to get some type of response? Because I think we really need it from the state. I mean, we really should have something from them. I mean, I said, that's, we don't have enough information. I said I need more in. information from the state, and I would like to uh, even council to take a look at it. I mean, where's the liability going to lay? Can we pass over it until the fall? And I feel sure. like this is going to uh, just be, I mean, we saw tonight, oh, this okay. is a heated way to just this is gonna be a fire up night. debate. And, <clears throat> yeah. well, and so the issue we're going to have is it's coming up again fall. next winter. Okay. Right. So, yeah. I mean, in reality, it's not going to go into effect until 20, the summer of 2020 yeah. or something like that. You know well, I mean? we're going to be up against it again yeah. down yeah. at the other end with people walking from Greenleaves to the mm -hmm. mall. Mm -hmm. right. You know, and keeping that snow, then they, every time they plow, it's back up on there. The reality is they're not you know, going to give us a response. Yeah. I mean, they ignore no, everything and we sent to them. I, so. I think District 2 coming here and having this discussion, if they're going to make wider passes and make it accessible for a pickup truck to go down and maintain, then that, that changes, that's a whole different story, you know? Yeah, I'd like to wait When, when you've got a three or four foot sidewalk and we don't have the equipment to maintain it, you know, anymore, <coughs> can it, it we makes a big difference. Can we make, can can we make a motion to get yep. the state in make here? Make a motion. So yeah. Summons them. I, I, I'd like to try. <laughs> yeah. We're going to wait. They're having a uh, hearing next week about the Bay Road Bridge. Maybe we can oh, approach okay. them. Then. Tell them they're on the agenda for both. Yeah. So the state's well, policy is not to plow sidewalks that they've built. I've told them that it's an unfunded liability, mm -hmm. and they said, yeah, it is. Well, they didn't pass that torch to us. So I guess the question is... We didn't is, accept it. Is it legally our response, or is the, does the liability fall on us if we don't clear it despite it being on the state layout? So can we get a clarification from council yeah. on that? Yeah, I will. And, and if there is no liability, then why should If there's no that? liability and the state's not going to claim responsibility for it, then we don't need to follow that. Okay. 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 All right. Sounds like a plan. And so, then we'll so plan on passing over this until we... Do we have enough information? So we want to so make a motion there's, to there's a new District 2 director, so I think if we bring them in and talk to them, and if, if they're truly going to make adjustments to this next section of Route 9 that they're <coughs> going to do, then maybe somewhere down the line they can make a plan of correcting through the center of town here mm -hmm. to the bridge. You know, it, it, it's an option. So I'm going to make a motion. But they didn't really show any any uh, love, any any <laughs> cure in the new part they put in from the Amherst line to the malls. Yeah. So. They're gonna make a motion that we um, move, a uh, pass over this agenda item or remove it or whatever we're doing. You're moving it or passing over? We take it off the warrant. Yeah, so we're gonna take it off the warrant um, and put it a placeholder on the fall. Yeah, town I think meeting. we already voted Second. that. Pass, leave it on and pass over it. But take it any, off. Take it any off. further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so okay. number 23 is gone. Number 27, this is the general bylaw for adult use marijuana public consumption. This modifies a bylaw that's already on the books and makes it more uh, enforceable. This is the one that Chief Mason was just mm -hmm. talking about. Mm -hmm. This is not a planning board article. Whose is it? Well, they Sorry. wrote it, but they're not going to—they're not going to defend it on town meeting floor. That's sweet. Okay. Um, and just remember, next week we're going to assign who is speaking to what amendment. Yeah. So. <laughs> Should we hold feels. on voting on this one until I honestly haven't? Like read this verbatim. Sure. If we're gonna have to speak to it, uh, and, and I are you also okay with that. Yeah. Waiting uh, out of. They, they made the bylaw. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm worried thing. about somebody saying, well, there's nothing in here about growing outside, and then yeah. Yeah. what are we supposed to say? Exactly. <laughs> so we should have a chance to conference with the planning board before we vote. Mm -hmm. And maybe they and can both of them. Maybe they can change their mind and they'll speak I, on it since they wrote it. So it's, and the planning board's gonna speak on 28, correct? Yep. Okay. All right, that's all I have. Okay. All right.
good to me. Uh, I think it was just the town administrator, or was there uh, one more thing? This is a new agenda item, public auction. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah that's right. That, sorry, my computer is Are we going to waive the fee for the auction permit? I make a motion that we waive the fee for the auction permit for the Senior Center uh, Council on Aging Auction to be held Wednesday, April 24th at 10 a.m. Second. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 And then the last thing, town administrator report. Anything we didn't discuss there, David? Uh, we covered a lot of the territory already in this meeting, and we had an update last week, but uh, just to touch on the classification compensation plan, conducted interviews on Monday and Wednesday, did an orientation on Tuesday. That project was uh, going uh, well. Um, there was some discussion about the reaction from the department heads at the uh, department head meeting. I shared that with uh, the, the consultant, so seems like that's moving forward. Uh, just skipping through stuff that we haven't, that we have talked about already. Town meeting all the town all the time at this point. Uh, um, in the long-term projects, the Greenfield Anaerobic Digester, there's been a discussion about how best to coordinate the many towns that would participate in hauling their sludge from their wastewater treatment plants to the anaerobic digester, which still has yet to be, to be built in Greenfield. Originally, people were talking about an intermunicipal agreement that would uh, bring a dozen towns together. Uh, the issue is, is that the towns have went range in, uh, in wealth quite a lot. And they were hoping to get a loan from the USDA for this project. Communities like Hadley will not qualify for those loans because we're just too affluent. So now they're talking about putting together a separate legal entity to manage the project under limited liability corporation rules. Uh, this is a great opportunity. The anaerobic digester is a great opportunity for us to control our sludge hauling costs and disposal costs. So we want, definitely want to pay attention to this project, but I think we need to be really careful about joining some sort of uh, multi-town limited liability corporation. <coughs> So we need to know what this means, and we need to uh, be clear about the obligations that might arise in the future unintended consequences. So we'll bring people in to talk to the board about what this looks like when this has been developed a little bit further. Uh, a little bit more on that. Uh, three weeks ago now, I went to Fort Devons uh, for a wastewater class. And Springfield's still looking into this also. And they're really interested in putting a digester in down there. So it might be another option? And they, they really want to go regionalized, but their biggest thing is they need a little bit of help from the communities that are interested in it to uh, approach the state for a grant funding. And, and the state was behind putting a digester in at the University of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why they wouldn't, to help Western Mass out, the four counties out here, if, why they wouldn't take into consideration Springfield's uh, plan or offer. So some way, somehow, we need to speak with our representatives and get them involved, uh, along with the other representatives in the uh, four county area and, and and somehow move this along I mean if, if there's a bigger picture out there and we can save a little bit more money then I, I would say we would be all before it but yeah I think it's uh, whether it's Greenfield or Springfield I think it's yeah. something that we should uh, commit to pursuing based on the fact that it can save us a lot of money and uh, just in trucking yeah and, it, and it's mm -hmm. the environment the friendly way to get rid of it rather than put it in the landfill yeah. but I, I definitely don't want to commit to uh, you know liabilities that might or might not arise from the project yeah, yeah. 
Yep. All right, so the budget is coming together. The town meeting is coming together. Um, we have a number of uh, community events coming up. April 13th, there's the rabies clinic. April 18th, the Mass Department of Transportation is going to hold a public hearing in this room. Six o'clock, talk about the Bay Road Bridge replacement uh, project. Uh, on April 24th, there's the auction of the Senior Center contents starting at 10 a.m. And we'll work on getting a banner on the fence. Uh, public forum on the annual town meeting warrant on April 25th. April 27th, Hadley Mothers Club has a recycling event. May 2nd is annual town meeting at Hopkins Academy. Any other announcements? I have one. Um, sixth grade fundraiser. Uh, ducking. <laughs> Say that clearly. <laughs> Ducks. Um, if you want to make a $10 donation, and have ducks appear on <coughs> oh, somebody's yeah. lawn in the dead of night and um, to surprise someone, you can email hadley2025ducks at gmail.com, as in class of 2025. Right. Okay. And uh, it was done to us. We did it to several other people already, so kind of cool to wake up and see a whole bunch of big rubber duckies spread across your lawn. <laughs> <laughs> Do they deliver to Greenfield? I don't know about Greenfield. <laughs> 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 you pay extra for the right donation, I'm sure they will. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Um, I just wanted to uh, say thank you to the 1,240 some odd people that, not that they're odd, 1,241 I think, people that uh, came out to vote in this election and tell the other 2,600 voters that are registered you don't know what you're missing. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of rain and coldness. That's Lots of rain and coldness. Yeah. Yeah. Like sure. you're in your car to get there, oh. run inside. I just have one announcement tonight is uh, the passing of Joyce West. Uh, our condolences to her, her family, her husband Art and children and grandchildren and all her friends and family. She certainly was a, a presence in our town for many years on school committee and finance committee and uh, a big supporter of 4-H, uh, having ran many 4-H clubs and she was a uh, running. I don't know how she ever did what she did all those years and taking care of the farm and uh, always baking something and uh, she ran Booster Club for a while. They, you know, there's just so many things that she had her hand in. And so certainly will be missed by many people. So our condolences to everybody. And I don't know if it's something about the name Joyce, but you never had to wonder where you stood. <laughs> no, right? you did not. Which is a good thing. When we good. ran for school committee, the uh, slogan was the choices were the choices. <laughs> <laughs> so that was for a couple yeah. of our election terms. So it certainly will be missed. Motion right. to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I don't know. If, I don't know if it's appropriate or not, but I'd like to. Uh oh. Uh, if it starts with that. <laughs> <laughs> Motion to adjourn. No, no, I don't know whether to thank the people for voting for me or thank them for three more years of this. <laughs> uh, but I, I appreciate everybody coming out for the people who did and and, and voted and did their part in our community. So their right to vote. Their right to vote. Sure. Exactly. For participating. You know, if you don't vote, then. You know, you don't, uh, you don't have a chance to say your say, and I think it's important, no matter how you voted. Right. All right. Motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, yeah. um, all those in, what do we get? Roll call at the end? No. All of those all in favor? Fa all in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. I'll get it.